Hi, happy Sunday, everyone, and welcome to, I believe this is game three of uh, Jasper's Game Week. I am Amy Lynn DeZora. I'm one of the community managers for the D&D Adventures League, and today, uh, my merry band of adventures, we're going to be running through the first adventure that I have ever written. So this one is near and dear to my heart. Um, this uh, is part of a project called Pip Yep's Guide to All of the Nine Hells. Um, and we're going to be going to Phlegathos today. So yeah, ta -da! I guess I'm going over this way. Um, so Thomas, since you were uh, playing Vanna White for me, do you want to start first with your character introduction so I can get all your info? Sure, absolutely. Um, my name is Thomas Votaw. I'm here. Uh, we do some streams uh, for the Drifters Atlas. I am here playing Zephyn Creed, a level eight changeling sorcerer. Anything to declare in magic item customs that might break my game? <laughs> uh, you're muted. Am I still muted? There it yeah, goes. Um, I have a cloak of protection. It's the only magic item I have. Okay. Uh, AC and your passive AC perception. is 14. Passive perception is 11. Got it. Um, what pronouns does Zephyr use? Uh, he, they. Got it. Perfect. All right. Anthony, you're up. Hi, I'm Anthony. I'm from Talon and Claw, and I am playing Mixon Titan, who is a level 10 human fighter from the land of Amara. Um, yeah. I did miss your level 10. Level 10. AC? 16. Passive perception? 12. Anything weird? Nope, just a couple swords and a lot of fighting. <laughs> <laughs> swords and fists. All right. Jeremy. Uh, hi, my name is Jeremy. Uh, big fan of Adventurers League and all the cons. So uh, I'll be playing Venefitrix Tanthul. Uh, do you just want like simple character stuff or would you like my character intro as well? Oh, we can do intro in a couple minutes. So yeah, just basics. I'm using yep. my favorite table tracker from Will Doyle. I keep these in a binder for all of the games that I run as like little mementos. Oh, awesome. So um, yeah, just class level, AC, and passive. OK, so I am a 10th level wizard, mm -hmm. divination. So uh, I can roll portent whenever you'd like. My passive perception is 15. And your AC? My AC is 19. And anything weird that you're bringing to the table? I made a deal with Bell. I'll make a note. Yeah, it might come up. All right, that brings us to Matt. Hey, hey, how you guys doing? Um, I'm Matt Forbeck. I write all sorts of stuff. Um, I've got a fifth level Air Genasi Barbarian named Wur, which I have just seen for the first time this morning. So we'll <laughs> all right, uh, passive perception, please, and AC. Oh, you can ask me the tough ones. Uh, AC is 14. And where's the passive perception on this thing? It's D&D Beyond. I've never done D&D Beyond before. Left oh, side of the screen. Left side of the screen. Ah, here we go. 10. There we go. Got it. Thank you. Got my readers going here so I can see what the hell I'm doing. Uh. All right, Chris. Hey, I'm Chris Lindsay from Wizards of the Coast uh, and of the head of the D&D Adventures League. I oh, am gosh. playing... Yeah, it's a true story. I am playing Thistle. Thistle is a halfling warlock, celestial warlock. He would say he's just a lamplighter, though. Okay. Level 10. Uh, Thistle comes with a, a, a golden pseudo dragon named Biscuit. <laughs> I love it. And um, his armor class is 18. And a passive, please. His passive perception is 10 because he has permanent ADHD. <laughs> Any weird magic items? 
Uh, no weird magic items, no. No, nothing out of the ordinary. All right. Gary, what do you got for us? So today I'm playing my um, Bard Warlock flip. Mm. He is an ex-goblin, uh, so his race is human. And uh, his AC is 14 and his passive perception is 15. I want to find out how he's an ex-goblin. <laughs> there's a story to that, man. Don't ask questions. Uh, I'm sure there's a story. I'm curious. I'm very curious. <laughs> I may have missed it. Your uh, flips level is eight. Bard six, warlock two. Perfect. Hexblade, if it matters. Nope, I think we are good. Let's get our APL going. I can't do math in my head. Perfect. I have a Kenneth mandolin, and I'm, <laughs> taking, I'm taking donations for people not to hear me sing. So. <laughs> You know, I would do the same thing. All right. Well, fair adventures. It seems as if uh, you have answered a call, uh, a posting, a job advertisement, um, put out by Pipyap the Imp, who uh, has been living mostly happily um, on the material plane ever since he was a familiar to a wizard named Halvin Grangle. He's no ordinary imp. Um, a strange sort of power emanates from him as if he's actually a, a fairly powerful spellcaster in his own right. Um, Pipyap wants to stay as far away from the Nine Hells as he can, uh, which is why he invited you here to this tavern today. Um, he's promised you uh, fame and glory and brushes with death. So uh, he probably he probably mumbles that last part under his breath. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. I uh, thank you for showing up for my uh, my job posting today. I need you to do me a favor, and really, your favor to me is going and claiming a favor from someone else. So let's just get you started. Uh, I need you. I got an old friend down in Flegathos, down in the fourth layer of the hells. We're friends. We're friends, but uh, I'm a little afraid that if I go, I'm not going to be able to get back, and I like it here. So, here's the deal. You go there, get me, this is important, a bottle of wine. This is vital, vital to my enjoyment here of life on the material plane. You go there, get my wine, bring it back, and uh, we'll call it a day. What do you think? Piece of cake, right? <laughs> What's in for us, Pippi App? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't have as much in gold to offer you, but uh, Flegathos is a lawful evil kind of place, and Finders Keepers is a law kind of, uh, and you're mortals. So, so traveling, traveling to the Nine Hells isn't something anyone gets to do every day. I think of the stories you'll be able to tell. You'll never have to uh, pay for room or board or drink again if you go and tell these. Uh, go to a tavern and tell a story of uh, of your exploits if you survive. What's the catch, dude? I uh, can't say you seem very honest. Uh, I mean, I'm just uh, kind of nervous. I don't want to go back. Uh, I like it here. No catch. Um, you go there? I don't know. I think, I think Pippi Apple would make a fine pair of boots. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, your feet your feet look kind of big there. Um, <laughs> What's so special about this uh, bottle of wine? Well, you can't get it here on the plains. Uh, the sommelier, my friend, uh, Shirvasa, that's the guy you gotta find. It's uh, there's just there's just nothing like it. It kind of it doesn't quite light your face on fire, but oh, it, it it gives you it clears out your sinuses really well. I don't think you'd like it. Um, I just I, I could go get it myself. I just don't want to. I can I can pay you if I can give you some gold and and uh, here uh, he'll pull out a um, scroll of sending and pass it on. You know I'm gonna give you this just in case. Use it if you need me, but don't need me. <laughs> I've been itching to uh, go visit family, so uh, it's probably time to head down. But I'm in. But wait, that's that that spell doesn't work between there and here. Good point. Uh -huh. How do we get there? <laughs> well, uh, we'll figure that out. 
I've got some, I've got some friends down there. You can. Yeah, yeah I, I have no desire to get trapped down there. So I mean, we'll yeah, no. what are we waiting for? Come on. I mean, I, I guess yeah, and he'll actually he'll he'll rifle through his pockets and pull out a small cube and start clicking the buttons on it. Okay, you don't you don't believe me? Fine. What's the name of your friend that we're getting the wine from? Shirvasa. And how do we find Shirvasa? He's kind of well known down there. So once you get there, just ask the locals. What really? What kind of devil is he? <laughs> oh, run, guys, come on. Didn't say it was the devil. Just, once you get down there, just start being social with all of the evil creatures that are standing around. Mm -hmm. Have you seen how many evil people there are up here? We we don't talk to them, do? Yeah, at just, least they uh, fake it. Before we uh, go down there, I want the record to reflect that just ask the devils is never my plan A. Just saying. My plan A is never my plan A, so <laughs> we're good to go. <laughs> All right. So here's a couple of tips before you leave. And he clicks. Uh, he clicks one of the buttons on the small square that he's holding. If you do any, everything right, you're not going to get into too much trouble down there. If you do get into trouble, you can kill it, but just don't do that in front of the city guard, because then you'll end up uh, getting taken to the diabol diabolical court, and that's a bureaucracy in hell is even worse than non-hell bureaucracy, so just be careful. I'd hate to have to send for your bodies and write letters to your families, so... Don't die. Cool. Good All right. Sounds good. Uh, this portal is going to put you right outside the capital, on the outskirts of the capital city of, I always mess this one, Abramok, the capital city of Phlegathos, fourth of the nine hells. From there, make your way to the dis business district, ask for Shirvasa, someone will give you directions, they'll probably be right, you'll be fine. So when you're ready, he'll send you back. This seems super easy, and I'm all for it. Yeah, you know, nothing to it. Cake. Piece of cake. We like cake, right? <laughs> Maybe. Why does this plane sound like a bad chess call? <laughs> <sighs> all right. What do we think? We're good. Portals, portals won't be open forever. We're all good. Right. Sure. All right. It's a terrible idea. I can't wait to see what happens. <laughs> My swords are ready. As you uh, step through the portal, a burst of steam threatens to overwhelm you as uh, the, your skin begins to tighten and crack from the blistering environment. Uh, you've arrived on a sizable strip of solid land yeah, was, surrounded by fiery and molten lava. There are several lengths of stone that protrude into the lava, um, next to which gondolas bob and ebb as the uh, as the magma flows around the, the docks. Devils stand next to their steel gondolas, balancing with their long oars as they heckle each other and barter with the other customers at the docks. But before the portal closes, Pippi up shouts instructions, find Shirvasa and tell him that I've sent you to collect and see if he'll give you two bottles and the portal closes. Didn't he mention that before we left? <laughs> Pip Yep's kind of a shady guy. I say we ask for five. I say that, that imp would still make a fine pair of boots. <laughs> if you catch him, you can keep him. I'm leaning toward the boots plan, man. This is uh, <laughs> complicated. Well, now we are in Flagranos. We have to uh, at least get back to the imp to make the boots plan happen. So. True story. All right, so wine first, then boots. In that order, hopefully. <coughs> All right, so you appear on the edge of a dock. Did um, out of character? Did we passed along a roll twenty link for visual aids? Okay, I'm gonna pop a link in our Zoom chat here. If you have wine first, then boots, sounds like my wife's shopping trips. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I'm going to pop this. This is just for visuals, so we get an idea of what things look like. If you don't mind popping that up. But it's a it's a long stretch, uh, probably 
a hundred feet of um, molteny, uh, cooled molten lava uh, protrusions, and the the lava is just bubbling and flowing up around it, and the the boats will sort of um, just bob there as they wait for their passengers to disembark. There is barbed devils and bearded devils all just uh, kind of, you know, like a like a taxi stand in New York City, uh, heckling the customers, uh, bothering each other, just sort of having a, a good time until the then their next uh, fare comes through. Uh, does anybody know what the going rate to cross this freaking river is? A hundred gold. Uh, um, uh, did you say a hundred copper pieces? That sounded like to me. Gold. You said gold. I did. One Give gold her... each. No, a hundred. hundred. Uh, mm, just, just a second. Uh, so Flip will turn around. He will lean into his companions. He will cast um, Eagle Splendor on himself. And then uh, he will attempt to negotiate with the fairy person and see if he can drive the going rate down a little bit from 100 gold. Uh, okay, so uh, 13 persuasion mm -hmm. and an attempt to uh, reduce the cost of the crossing. Okay. So you've got advantage on charisma, right? Perfect. Come on, guys. We need donation dice. Let's get this happening. He rolled a 13. <laughs> We're going to die in the first five minutes. Get donating. Yeah, I rolled a 13 with plus nine and advantage. Somebody take pity on us. <laughs> I have two new rolls in the chat. All right. So uh, how are we going to barter? Uh, so this is what I think we should do. You seem like an honest devil. Um, You know that the going rate isn't 100. So maybe let's do like five gold each which is like 30 total seems super fair to me i mean i'm risking my boat my livelihood taking taking use out there uh hey sully what are you gonna charge this uh there's a group of troublemakers to uh to to head over into the city there's my puppy um <laughs> Uh, and Sully farther down the dot dock, dock shouts back, eh, hundred gold each. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good. Hmm. Or you know, we just take the boat and go. Yeah, I like that plan. Hmm. I mean, I, I don't. Uh, boats are expensive. Boats are expensive. Uh, what did you say you wanted five each? Yeah, five, five each. Yeah. What about like ten? Ten total. That's a deal. Well, deal. Uh, no, no. Ten ten gold pieces. That's, each yeah 10 gold each i like that i like this guy yeah 10 each wait no what no no um 10 gold pieces for everybody group discount right i don't even know if my boat's gonna fit all of you One, then why are we talking to you or i don't know you started talking to me exactly, <laughs> exactly. we're gonna need a bigger boat mm. yeah you might have to talk to francis down at the end there uh but yeah um okay 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 does he have a competitor on this dock somewhere? Oh, there's like four of them. <laughs> Anybody else want, want, want 10 gold pieces to take this group over? I mean, 10, 10, 10 is better than what I've got right now. So yeah, uh, Sully down the dock, uh, farther on down, will um, will say, yeah, 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 10, I got you. I'll, I'll take you here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Good devil. So, the right. discount broker is over there. <laughs> I uh, I feel good about this, everyone. Uh, oh. I don't know math very well, but I think ten is quite a bit less than a hundred each. Each. Yeah. yeah, sounds good. Yes. Yeah, um, I've uh, I've got some some tiny fiery mouths to feed. I got nothing better to do, so I'll I'll take it. Where are you headed? Flag your toes. <coughs> Bless me. Downtown. Downtown. You got it. This is right. Hop on in. We'll uh, we'll get you set up. All right. So uh, Sully takes you uh, holds the boat steady as you all clamber into his gondola, and uh, we'll begin asking you 
What are you in town for? What's you're, you don't really look like you're from around here. Hold on. We're looking for a uh, we're looking for a contact. Is... Okay. Right here. That's big. That's right big. On, Good job. Man. You made they it. Made, they made okay. that. We try wick, to keep everything they made a really vague. Really If you don't mind. Tone. Absolutely. No, no, DM I thing. What? Because um, some people yeah, dress up so, in cosplay. Hmm. Well, you'll, just, you'll just keep. This is. Uh, she's the head of the Adventures League. He runs a, a company. He runs Talon and Claw. Ooh. He works for Wizards of the Coast. Uh, He's the wine guy. He is an author who's run up, written a bunch of like mm, Halo books. I don't, and other really, stuff. I don't really drink too much, but I'm Fenway, sure that he if, liked a tweet uh, a while back. And if Fenway you head over said, the business district, hey Matt, there's, four, four, there's four all sorts of like my fancy tweet. pants. Do you want to play? Business is over there. And Some leather workers. His character he's playing. He saw for the first time today. You'll be great. Just... Other malcontents, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, gonna... I don't. They're a little too, uh, a little too hoity-toity <clears throat> for like for what uh, I make. But oh. uh, you said I had the yeah, mask. no, I think I think you'll have you'll be successful if you head over to the dock. Uh, but as as he's rowing, the he's the the boat starts to starts to shake a little bit as if it's uh, his his pole is hitting something in the lava and he starts he starts wobbling a little bit and then um sort of like jaws style you see some ripples in the lava coming towards you and uh popping out of the uh lava to try and snap off a snap at the gondolier on your boat is a lava snake it goes bra we should hit that oh yeah that's not good <laughs> it does it uh sully is like <laughs> Sully is very startled and starts whapping the lava snake on its nose with his gondolier's pole. Can I? And hey, hey, hey! Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll give you your money back. You, uh, you help me get rid of this guy. Can I pull out my short sword and take a take a hit at this Absolutely. snake? Absolutely. Could I cast animal friendship? Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, that's an at will spell. Snakes only. And this is a snake. Yeah. So um, that is a, I believe it's a wisdom save. All right. It's DC 17. Use my new dice, see how they do. That is a six plus lava snake. Plus zero, so that is a six. It fails. Okay, so it's friendly for 24 hours. Hold off. <laughs> mm. Darn it, we want to kill something. <laughs> oh, but it looks Does so it friendly. Remind me of Animal Friendship, though. Is it beasts only? I believe so, yes. Uh, then this one oh. is actually going to shake it off a little bit. All right. I wasn't sure. Yes. So that will, uh, well, unfortunately. Uh, so maybe the sword is the better tactic here. So if you want to uh, roll into initiative, I'll take that from you all. Okay. okay. Ooh, not good. <laughs> all right, come on, dice. 19. Okay, anyone beat a 20? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. I got a 22. Okay. I did also. That's Thistle. Okay, so we've got Thistle and Mixin. And then our big bad. All right. Anyone between 15 and 20? Zephan also beat a 20. Oh, my goodness. What do you got, Zephan? Zephan got a 28. Ouch. Promise, guys, it'll be the only time I roll well. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I use those re-rolls and make you re-roll that? All right. Uh, what's his benefit? He gets my one one good roll. Thirteen. Got it. Uh, then got a thirteen. Were. What do you get oh, for initiative? Uh, yeah. I, I get a whole three. Three. Okay. <laughs> All right. And flip. Nineteen. Got it. Ooh. I was so stunned that people beat me. I wasn't quick to draw. <laughs> Perfect. All right, that means uh, Zephyr. Uh, Zephyr, you're up first. You see a huge monstrosity coming to try and chomp on the gondolier at the front of your vessel. Gotcha. I'm going to shoot my crossbow at it. 
Okay, go ahead. Please do. And that is a 21. That'll hit. Five damage. Got it. Okay. Uh, Thistle. Thistle will raise a stick and uh, a pillar of holy light will descend from somewhere above this plane down upon this creature and it can make a dexterity saving throw at DC 19. Absolutely. For the sacred flame I just cast. Well, that's a nine. Oh, well, that's not good enough. Um, slow. Let's see here. That's going to be 17 points of radiant damage. Takes it all. Okay. Mixin. So I have my sword. two short swords in hand. I'm going to take a slice. Okay. It's a 20 to hit. Yes. That is seven points of slashing damage. Ooh, takes it. Sort of snarls back at you. And, and then my other attack with the other sword. It's an 18. Okay, yeah, that'll hit. With three points of damage. Okay. Now, then, you're, go ahead. I get a second attack. Yep. That is in 17 to hit. 17 will hit. Ooh, six plus six, 12. Oof. Okay. So you're making melee attacks on this lava snake. So you are going to take some fire damage due to the proximity. Okay. So that is going to be four, seven, eight, 20 points of fire damage. From its heated, fiery body, and then it is the Remoraz's or yeah, the fire snake's turn. It's Remoraz. All right, um, Zephan, how did you attack previously? Cross yeah. crossbow bolt. You sorry, crossbow bolt. Okay, so you arranged thistle's range. All right. Looks like Mixon, we're coming for you. You're hey, Dia. Yes. Um, I have this character is a wild magic sorcerer. Yes. Um, I have been using a high probability dice to roll on the channel for a d20 with his background. Is that okay? Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, a 27 on a bite to get you, Mixon. I'm going to roll some damage. Six, ten. Oh man, it's the end of the weekend math. Uh, 16 points of piercing damage, please. For you. All right, but that brings us to flip. Uh, all right, so I'm going to point at the, fl at the snake. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say, you're trying really hard to flip this boat. You weren't your parents' favorite, were you? And I would like to make it a charisma save for Vicious Mockery. So, oh. And if anybody wants to put some good lines for Vicious Mockery in the chat and make a donation, I might say them. <laughs> Got a two on that save. I can't believe you failed. You're going to hurt this, uh, this snake's feelings so bad. Five damage and disadvantage on its next attack. Okay. Okay, Benef oh, Benefitrix. Yeah, you got it right. Okay, I'm gonna say it a different way every time. That's fine, that's fine. Um, I'll call on the dark powers of my god, Char, and Toll the Dead, Wisdom okay. 17. 13. Okay, so that is 10 necrotic damage. Hopefully it does some damage. Got it, yes. Takes it. That is the end of my turn. Okay. 
not looking great, looking bloodied here. Okay, last but not least, where? What would you like to do? So I'm gonna take my hand axe and throw it right in the center. Oh, go ahead, please. Let's hope. All right. Oh, and I rolled a one. Oh, <laughs> do we guess, do we have any re-rolls? We got two available? Yeah, definitely yeah. use one. Go for it. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because then There's they'll have to 14 this more. time. 14 will hit. All right. Yeah, let's see here. Does eight points of damage. Mm. Okay. Still standing, not very well. Uh, your gondolier is shouting. Ah, ah, ah. All right. It's a good use of that ore. Do something with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. It tries to uh, stick the, the pole in between its jaws to keep it from closing. So Maybe this is what happens when you get budget gondolier. <laughs> you know, whatever this boat <laughs> thing is called. Gondolier. <laughs> <laughs> Zephan, you are up. Zephan is going to take a moment and uh, start thinking about spells and he is going to cast chromatic orb and he pulls out his diamond and he looks through it and he wants to do I think I can do frost damage. Ooh. Yeah, cold damage. I will do cold damage. Okay, please do. Uh, 16 plus 6. Mm. Go ahead. Uh, 14 damage. Okay. Cold. It doesn't seem to take as much cold as you would expect for being a lake, uh, a snake swimming in a lake of lava. And then I'm going to go ahead and roll wild magic. Okay. Thistle, you're on deck. Hmm. No surges from you, uh, Zephan? Nothing crazy? Okay. All right, Thistle. So how is this thing looking? Is it is it like, you know... It's about just bloody. Just all this? Okay. I don't like this big fire snake thing. Uh, so... Uh, Thistle holds his rod up again, and this time a bolt of energy uh, fires at this this large serpentine lava creature thing uh, as he casts Guiding Bolt at it, mm -hmm. um, looking for something a little bigger. Uh, Thistle will attack, and he rolled a one, and he's a halfling. Ah. So he will roll again. Yes. Because... Good call. <laughs> I will roll a second one. <laughs> it, it was, in fact, meant to be. I guess so. This will can I, can this will use one of the rerolls? If yes. you use them now, you won't have them later. So I'm okay with that. <laughs> Me too. Okay, here we go. Twenty six. Ooh, yes, that will hit. That makes up now. I way better. I believe in our chat that we'll have more than enough rerolls. <laughs> 39 radiant damage, and it is outlined in a sublime celestial glow. So the next person to attack it will get advantage. Ooh, delightful. And I believe that's in addition to the disadvantage on its next attack from Fish's Mockery, correct? Yeah. Okay. Still standing, but like one of its like snaky legs is just sort of like limp and and flopping around. It's it's not looking pretty. It's not looking Ooh. great. But I like I like snake legs. <laughs> <laughs> They're a delicacy, I hear. Uh, Mixin. So even though the uh, the heat kind of got to me there, I'm gonna hit him again with my short sword. Okay. 17? Yep. That's eight points. Okay, you'll take 10 fire. And 
then I'm going to attack him again. Okay, please do. Uh, that's a 12. That will miss. Okay, that brings us to the snake who's going to, as you're still the only one seems to be in range. Uh, 17 on mix and that will hit. So a couple of these. That is six points of piercing damage and three fire. Oh. Yeah. You know what? I forgot to roll a disadvantage on that one. That one will miss, actually. Woohoo! All those feelings damage uh, saved saved the day there. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. Flip. So we got a request for a Canadian themed insult in the chat with a donation. So um, Flip will point at this creature and he's going to say, How do you live in hell? Your attacks are colder than a Canadian winter. Oh. And like a, a, a vicious shiver. Uh, Wisdom save, please. Goes down. <laughs> Let's see, because that is a 11. That is a, a failure. And uh, you take five points of tears damage. Oh, tears stream down his snaky face. All right. All right, Flip, you're good. That brings us to benefit tricks. Okay, I will again toll the dead. Okay. Wisdom 17. 17 on the die, no modifier. Then with. Okay. Wait a minute. We're on a quest for the guy that has a Z and an X in his name. <laughs> He's definitely evil. He's de <laughs> <laughs> <What> an L. <laughs> Word. What would you like to do? Where? Oh, me. Okay. I'm going to throw another axe. Like, I'm still not <laughs> in that character. <laughs> oh, no. I totally get it. Oh, hmm. It sounds like an interesting, yeah, whoever it is. Uh, yeah. Take take my other hand axe and okay. have it right down his gullet if I can. Ah. Rawr, down he is. Back into the fires. That'd be 14 plus 6 is 20 hits, hopefully. That'll hit. And a whole four points of damage. <laughs> Every little bit counts. I'm chipping in, you know? <laughs> yep. True story. <laughs> Make sure my math is right. Plus, that is actually enough to take it down. So how do you, uh, how do you kill this snake as it tries to eat your gondolier? I guess oh, we beat it the gondolier. <laughs> <laughs> I killed him with yes. four points. Yes, Excellent. I take all the credit. <laughs> well, you should. Come on, back up. This is how you do this. Perfect. <laughs> you people with your weapons and your armor and shit and your magic, this is how you kill a monster. <laughs> it's got like some toothpicks, the, the handle of your axe sticking out of its right, mouth. Bust off one of them, start picking my teeth. It's all good. We <laughs> died on snake tonight. The, uh, the snake's body seems to uh, slowly slink back into the lava as your your gondolier, Sully, just sort of, he just takes a moment. Okay. I appreciate that. That is one of the hazards of working here, but uh, I, I usually manage to steer clear. I must be a little a little off my game today to let one sneak up on us, but he'll, uh, he'll, he'll pull his coin purse out and hand you each back your fare for... It's because I'm so cute, right? I know, I get that a lot. <laughs> Those big eyes. Yeah. Beautiful. I like anime. <laughs> I understand why it's $100 a person now if you have to fight <laughs> lava snakes. It's a, it's, a, it's a risky business, but it uh, you know, puts food on the table. So after a, uh, a few more moments of just you know casual beautiful barren landscape there's uh molten lava bubbles uh, percolating around bits of stone and there's just heat shimmering from from the city as you approach it the skyline sort of uh 
dark and jagged but there's just like that that uh, overpowering wave of heat that emanates off of it um in the distance no matter where you look there you can always see there's the twisted stone spire off in the distance and uh sully's going to point that out as the the palace of lady fierna and belial um rulers of this layer of the hells it's uh yeah they're always they're always keeping an eye on us down here they don't really get too involved but uh you're always you always know where to find north because there it is except if you turn around and look south because there it is again it's one of those geographical anomalies it's it's not great. Don't get in trouble. Don't go there. Get out of hell as soon as you can. That's my that's my advice. What's north? Uh, he pulls out a compass. Uh, I don't actually know. He tosses it over. <laughs> <laughs> How does lava snake uh, taste? You know, I've never been brave enough to eat it. I don't like catching them. It's just it's a delicacy. I uh, I really already eat. cooked. Come on. It, it is. I, I perform more of a sashimi kind of, <laughs> kind of deal. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your bravery out there, Sully. I'm oh. going gonna, gonna to write a tale about how you helped do something there. Absolutely. <laughs> I very bravely whacked it on the nose. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we all saw that. Yeah. And that's good advertising. I don't care who you are. That's good. <laughs> well, uh, There's no such thing as bad publicity, right? <laughs> just uh you know so don't don't mention any of the other gondoliers i don't i don't i don't need the competition all right but uh, uh here you go uh he'll pull up to another uh molten dock and say business district straight ahead can't miss it uh don't get lost need anything don't else sign any contracts don't take any wooden nickels either <laughs> Here we go. Good luck. Have fun. Don't die. That's a uh, good motto. That's freaking great advice, man. Um, <laughs> it's worth what we Not... paid for the trip, which was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> we, get, we get what you pay for. Oh, wow. True story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, right. inspiration. <laughs> so in the hustle of the bustle of the city, there's a, a main thoroughfare um, or you've been dropped off and there seem to be uh, large buildings off to your left. There's sort of a, uh, a, a farmer's market looking stalls and um, food carts off to your, your right or whatever the opposite of this side is because I'm losing my directions. Um, uh, devils and fiends are passing by as, uh, uh, as they're heading off to wherever they're going, work, uh, shopping, torture that sort of thing um but this seems like as good as uh, as good of a place as any to ask for directions uh to the artisans district where shirbasa resides oh, that's interesting okay. <laughs> the gondolier said it was in the business district that's right they said we just had to ask around right the guy who hired us dm so let's just go up and grab some jackass and say hey <laughs> Some devil, some sorry, some devilishly good devil. Say, hey, we're looking Turn. for Shirvasa. Have you heard of Shirvasa? Oh uh, yeah. He uh he works in the uh the he's he's the one that got, he's got like a pet death dog, right? Yeah, he, he's in one of these buildings over here. And there's he'll point to a uh, a line of um buildings with different colored awnings, um, but they don't seem to have signs on them. That's a good start. <laughs> so wait did you say he has a pet deaf dog that is uh yeah that's what i said that's what 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 use is that to us how could we possibly use that information i mean that's all i know about him great yeah did a good I... dog go? <laughs> i don't know i've never gotten close enough to find out Okay, this is truly hell. So he's over there somewhere, and they all look the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. I, I By the way, when out. you get there, death dog. <laughs> I want to put it out there that all doggos are good doggos. Mm. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, this one has a pretty intimidating name, though. You can at least say that. 
All right, I gotta move a couple things around. See if I can get you a handout Ooh. for this, because uh, none of the none of the devils that you talk to actually have complete information on Shirvasa or any of the other um, vendors here in the district. Um, and they're all they're all too busy with the hustle and bustle, and they're devils. They don't give a crap about you, so they're just going to give you um, the least amount of information that they think they can get away with. And um, we'll go from there. Let's see if I can send you a file. We're, we're learning technology today. <laughs> what is a good way to do this? Full screen, screen share. Oh, maybe I can do this. It's okay. I've already blowed the whole naming convention. They had to change everyone's name around when I accidentally turned off my microphone my camera. Oh, we're just swapping characters at that point. We are we are doing so great. I got to be Matt Forbeck for like 10 minutes. Yes. <laughs> that was I'm kind so of cool. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Maybe take notes. Is there a good way for me to send everyone a file in Zoom? What about roll 20? Okay, yeah, I'm not everyone. I do have it in roll 20 and not everyone popped in and CL said he had trouble joining. Okay, so I definitely won't do that. Okay. Um, if you just do it, he'll fix it on the fly. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> I don't want to add that pressure. Let's see, let's see how much people will pay to see that. All right. <laughs> Let's so, make him work. If anyone wants to, I can start giving you clues from the devils. Uh, if anyone's got a pen and paper that you want to write down until I can figure out how to get this handout going. Sure. Sure, no, I can write down. It's hell. I don't promise to be detailed in my note taking, though. <laughs> uh, the jeweler that you didn't ask about, but this is hell and they don't care. The jeweler works next to the building with the white awning. Uh-oh, we get a logic puzzle. <laughs> okay. Mm. okay. I was going to... Uh, I'm typing it into chat as she says it. Oh, there we go. Right. <laughs> I can do that. I could, I'm just reading uh, what Chris writes You could uh, <laughs> copy and paste from the PDF if you have it. Yeah, that will probably be good. Look at this. Yeah. Technology. Great. All right, so clue two. The fiend in the building with the yellow awning drinks ale. So probably not our sommelier. Yeah. But that's very important because anybody who drinks ale is trustworthy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. The fiend with a pet skeletal mouse works next to the fiend with a crag cat. Where did that go? Oh, there it is. Okay, and I did manage to get my copy. You got a crag cat in hell. Apparently. All right. I can take it from here with the copy pasting. Thank you, Chris. Uh -huh. no okay. So the cord wainer, that is a profession, works in the first building on the left. The fiend in the building with the white awning drinks whiskey. What does a cord wiener do? I, cords? I looked it up when I wrote this and I have promptly yeah. forgotten. I they think they work rope, with leather or yeah, like textiles. I think they make ropes. That makes sense. The translator Weird. works in a building with a blue awning. The building with the yellow awning is to the right of the building with the white awning. I'm interested to see if anyone in chat will get this before 
our troublemakers do. Well, we're happy to let that happen. <laughs> I'm happy, happy to get donations with, for tips. That's right. The sommelier has a pet death dog. Okay. Who are the troublemakers? <laughs> Sounds like a band from down here in the house. Uh, <laughs> the fiend who works in the building with the red awning keeps a crag cat. Fiend in the middle building drinks tea. The scholar drinks seltzer water. Bubbles. The cord wainer works next to the building with the green awning. And the fiend with a nightmare drinks tea. And I shall see that copy paste the leaves for our friends in the chat. Oh my goodness. So much pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to role play by Barbarian and let you guys do this. <laughs> That's such a cop out, man. <laughs> that is not fair. Role play to get out of doing. <laughs> oh, when you, you guys use... play smart characters, go for it. <laughs> when you use role play, oh, wait, wait, wait. use not to do the puzzle. <laughs> Hashtag power gaming. Oh, yeah, this I'm is just getting into my character. <laughs> oh, Ted in the chat. It? has my back. A cord wainer is a short shoemaker who makes new shoes from new leather. Oh, nice. The more you know. And if you would have gotten the snake, we could have sold it to the cord wainer. Made some extra cash. Yeah. True story. Snake leather shoes. Snake lava snake leather shoes. Who doesn't want lava snake leather shoes? I hear that the height of fashion. <laughs> some pretty sharp <laughs> boots. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. So we boots. know that the cord wainer works in the first mm -hmm. building on the left. That so that's bad. something. So then the cord wainer works next to the building with the green awning. So that must mean that the building with the green awning is to the right of where the corn wiener, cord wainer works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate to be a cord wainer. <laughs> All I know is I didn't say wine dude anywhere in this entire list. <laughs> he has a pet death dog. It's true. Yeah. I'm looking for a death, 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 death dog. Do we know? Do we know how many awnings there are? There's there should be five. I think it's green, white, red, uh, yellow. Okay, so we know that yellow has to be either the middle one or the second from the right, because the blue awning is to the right of the yellow awning. So it has to be in either position three or position four. Well, I do know that the yellow awning is to the, I think it's to the right of the white awning. It's where the jeweler lives or, and likes to drink ale so far. Whereas in the white awning, they like to drink whiskey. It would seem. Um, you know, trying to build it backwards here. I just want to take my axe and start knocking on doors. <laughs> With a sharp I don't want to heart. talk to anybody. <laughs> Somebody might construe that as breaking in. And? I'm, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just pointing it out. Just okay, pointing fair. it out. <laughs> really more of an observation. <laughs> oh, man. Is anybody in the chat giving us donations with tips? So we could sure use it. <laughs> Wait, we can, we can get tips? <laughs> I, I, I freaking hope so. I've got a couple more. If anyone... Uh, if anyone oh, you mean like I... Yeah, we'll take more tips. Like ideas. Like ideas. Oh, wait. Are we, are you thinking we're getting tipped for this? 
Well, apparently we're not getting tipped for this, but uh, Gary, you uh, have been challenged for some better Canada puns. Oh my goodness. Okay. Better Canada puns. All right. The coffee. I'm going to put my toque on and uh, <laughs> I'm going to think about it. <laughs> better battery. Come on. Yes. <laughs> How do I turn puzzle into pun? Now you're asking for too much. <laughs> Can we physically see what order the awnings are in? They sort of shimmer with the with a light, and you can't quite tell. Uh, like the 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 heat shimmers come off of it. But if you give me um, a perception check, welcome to hell. <laughs> what we can get. The colors don't stay the same. <laughs> it's a nine, but I'm gonna use one of those re rolls. There you go. We've got seven left after this. It's an eleven plus. One, so 12. <laughs> okay. Um, the first awning, it, it looks it looks pretty red. At least when you concentrate on it, that seems to be the prevalent color as it's the heat shimmer it makes you sort of squint. Okay, we also know that the building in the middle drinks tea. Not the building, the dude who works in the building drinks tea. <laughs> <laughs> it is and um, we also know who drinks tea. Uh, the fiend with the nightmare. The fiend with the nightmare drinks tea. That's right. Okay. So Which we know, you know that the nightmare. Somalia. Somalia's drink wine. We should have a wine guy. That's what we need. We need the wine guy. I feel uh, like if they told us where the wine guy was, this puzzle might not be very hard. Yeah. We can always extract answers some other way. Oh my goodness. What else do we oh, know it. about the red awning? The fiend with the Craig cat, or yeah, the cordon wainer is in has the red awning and has a Craig cat, which could be beside green, which has a skeletal mouse. Yeah, it's to the it's next to the fiend with the Craig cat, um, which would suggest the blue is in the middle, and they drink tea, which is where the translator is, and therefore. Uh, the fiend that drinks tea has a nightmare. No, the blue can't be in the middle because it's to the right of the yellow awning. Yeah, it goes white, yellow, blue. Yeah, it is either white, yellow, blue, white, or yellow, blue, blue. yellow, white. Oh, shit. Yeah, because it says white. Where does it say? Um... But I thought I thought that we just figured out that red was the first one on the left. Yeah. Yeah, it goes it red, says... green, white, yellow, blue, I think. Red, green. Yeah, because it says yellow awning is to the right of the building with a white awning. Okay. Word. Do you want to go try and intimidate some uh, another clue out of one of the past? Sure. Past? I'll, just, I'll just walk in and say, look, devils, I'm looking for Shervasa, the guy with the wine, the guy with the dog. Ah, well, the, the, the cord wainer drinks wine. Nobody knows what the hell a cord wainer is. What are you talking about? But the, the guy with the leather shop over there. <laughs> He drink wine or does he sell it? He drinks it. Maybe he buys it from our source. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, you're right, I think. The white the white building is in the middle because we know that the guy in the middle drinks tea. We also know that the yellow fiend drinks ale, which means that the yellow fiend is in the fourth building from the left, and the blue fiend is in the building all the way to the right. And we also know that the yellow fiend drinks ale. And we know that the white fiend drinks, wait. The white fiend drinks tea, we just said, right? No. The white fiend drinks, drinks whiskey. whiskey. The middle yeah. building drinks tea. So maybe, yeah, it has to. Oh, I got confused and thought blue was in the middle. I say we just go beat up the cord waiter and whoever he is, if he's not the guy selling us. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get for having a stupid name. 
Nobody understands you. Come on, cord waiter. <laughs> so we know Ted, Ted in chat says Sommelier is fourth from the left. Well, we we know that um, the person that drinks tea has a nightmare, and I think that's blue. We know that green I mean, right now. skeletal mouse. Caffeine keeps them up, obviously. And Cordwainer is in that red place with a crag cat. So it's either white or yellow where this sommelier is. I think he's in the fourth from the left. Thanks for joining my TED Talks. <laughs> <laughs> Just point me at a door. I'm happy to knock on something. Try the fourth one from the left. Sure. <laughs> and which one is that? The fourth one from the left. You heard him. <laughs> <laughs> the must be you tell us. <laughs> we just work here. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's the one with the white awning. <laughs> Let's go knock on the one with the white awning. All right. Okay. Sounds like the place to go. That's yellow. Or sure, why not? And after after moments, uh, the door opens, and a uh, <laughs> um, a a imp flat opens the door, and there's a tinkling of bells as the door opens. Oh, 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 hello. Uh, can I help you? Any deaf dogs here? Uh, uh, not not presently. No, they they're no. no. We're looking for Shirvasa. Oh, yes. Welcome. Come on in. Uh, welcome to Unearthly Delights. Okay. <laughs> we found the joint. Uh, as you enter, uh, the shop is larger than it appears from the outside. Uh, there's a, uh, appears to be a 20 foot by 60 foot tasting area with small tables and a bar lining the edges. Uh, and there's a door leading to a smaller office in the back. There's finely made shelves and cabinets which hold, house wines of varying, uh, the bottles of varying um, shapes and colors. Some of them are very, very quite large and some are, some are quite tiny. Uh, fine glasses and diningware are neatly organized on the shelves about eight feet off the ground, out of reach of the lemures that are running around the shop sort of uh, dusting and cleaning up um, dirty tables. And they seem to be taking orders from the imp that answered the door. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Welcome, welcome to uh, Unearthly Delights. And the imp will introduce herself as Adara. Yes, yes. Um, uh, the master sommelier is uh, meeting a client in the back of here, and will hand you each a um, laminated list of rules uh, as she welcomes you to. Uh, please, please look this over um, for for your. Um, enjoyment here as well as mine. Uh, we don't we don't like to make the uh, the master angry. Uh, so, in order to avoid getting run over, a thistle like walks over to one wall, stands there, and then just kind of like levitates up. <laughs> the imp will sort of like float over to you and not okay. Just just stay out of trouble, please. Don't don't touch anything. And then I'll go get the master, and we'll float off to the back. I bet you don't have a rule against that. The, uh, uh, I'm going to copy paste this for the chat. The etiquette rules for unearthly delights uh, are listed as, while patronizing our fair store, please obey the following social etiquette to ensure all parties are treated with mutual respect and transactions are as seamless as possible. Standards for decorum, manners, and etiquette are as follows. Taste everything offered to you by the sommelier. Address the sommelier as master or with a similar honorific. Do not make extended eye contact. Do not show compassion for any of the staff members. Make no unreasonable requests of master sommelier. Ask for no more than you are offered. Never, under any circumstances, mention unicorns. 
jokes and puns of a feline nature are strictly prohibited. No spells or magical abilities are to be invoked at any time. Enjoy your stay. Would it be bad form to crumple this up and throw it over my shoulder? It's it's laminated. How are you going to do that? I'm a barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. If anyone can make it happen, I, I, I believe you were. True story. It can't really read it anyway. Hate. These are words. Why are they in my way? <laughs> do they, I don't uh, know why they they hand me a list of things that I totally want to do now. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a checklist. <laughs> What so happens when we do this? Puns. <laughs> it's like a scavenger hunt. We just go down the list. And... <laughs> After a few moments, there's sort of a roar and like some squeaking of um, of uh, a lemur who perhaps got in the sommelier's way as he storms out of his inner office. And uh, you see Shervasa, uh, a Rakshasa appearing in his natural tiger form with his weird twisty hands. Uh, he's wearing a uh, delightful uh, coat with tails and a peach colored ascot. And uh, oh, welcome. This <laughs> bum. So there you go. Easy enough. <laughs> well, yes, welcome. Welcome to, to Unearthly Device. What can I help you with today? You're not my usual patrons. Uh, yeah. Pip Yap said he wanted, you owed him something, and he asked us to come because something about being too afraid or being whatever. And you know Pip Yap, he talks and talks. I wasn't really listening. And he said something about wine. And that's why we're here. We have come to collect for Pip Yap five bottles of wine. <laughs> huh. Well, yes, Pip Yap. Hmm. I'm not surprised he he was too cowardly to come himself. But uh, here, while I while I look for for what we've got for you or for him rather, he'll go behind the bar and uncork a bottle that has some uh, flamey vapors that come out of the top and pour. Um, a few little tastes into glasses and we'll um, ask Adara to present the samples to you. Ah, you should try this. It's, it's magnificent. It's a, a fire wine from the city of brass, but be careful. It's, it's highly flammable. Please don't drop it. This is a horrible idea. I'll take a drink. I'm going to take I'll a drink. A sip well. And I'm spitting it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they do in fancy places, right? So, uh, uh, Thistle will pick it up. Is it like in a little thing? And he like smells it and does the whole rolling around thing. I've seen a guy do this in Waterdeep before. <laughs> and I go, you clearly have excellent taste, but you. Nice bouquet. Mm, you don't get anything else. You don't. <laughs> I look over at Thistle and I just kind of take my glass and I just slam it like a shot rather than taste it. I sip. Um, Skip will uh, Skip will, will smell it. He'll do the fancy thing. He'll do, to be super fancy, he'll do two pinkies while he's drinking it. <laughs> and uh, as he does, yeah. he's like, mm, this is good. Do you have any uh, ice wine from Niagara? I've heard that's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't carry anything that comes in such small bottles. Well, what about it's not uh, the size that matters? I've that's heard. a good policy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> anything from the uh, Shadowfell, perhaps? I'm missing a taste of home. Perhaps a vintage from Thaltanthar. Ah, uh, sadly not. I haven't been able to get my paws on anything there. But I've got I've got a dry <clears throat> bread uh, made from grapes aged on the plain of Arcadia. Uh, it's it's not a big seller here for obvious reasons, but it might be something you uh, lawful types might enjoy. Yes, friend. Um, yeah. Well, um, why why is it obviously not consumed here? Just assume oh. I, I don't know because I really do. I just would like you to clarify. Oh, because we're more of a uh, evil kind of place, and Arcadia is kind of goody two shoes we we don't really it, it leaves a bitter taste in our mouths like we've been following the rules and no, we don't yeah. care for it i've i've tasted the sample what do i do meow 
No. <laughs> <laughs> you can just put your glass back and uh, turns away. Oh, no. This one does a shutter take. Uh, that's funny. Got any more of this stuff? <laughs> oh, the one you spit out? No, not for you. No. I'll be happy to spit out other wine. It's okay. Yeah. That's about uh, what we came for, what Pip Yap has asked for. Oh, yes. That's a. Uh, he'll go behind his counter and there's like two, two bottles of a rather dusty, uh, uh, with dust caked on them. All right, well, here's the thing. I could just give these to you, but that's no fun. Um, I'd actually really prefer if you did me a favor so that I could do Pippi up a favor. I could give you some gold. Seems like there's a lot of favors going around today. Mm. Uh, yeah. What's in it for us? Don't you know my, my, great, my great uncle Asmodeus? A fine, fine monster of a ruler yeah is he the composer <laughs> rock me asmodeus <laughs> um i just i have i have a bit of a problem and i don't feel hmm safe here uh giving you no really my wine um there's there's are you familiar with cultists and all the problems that they <laughs> cause? There's a, there's a it's just in cultists of Bahamut we have a bunch of those. Uh, well, their cultists usually manage to to stir up some sort of trouble, and the trouble that these particular ones have been causing it's it's rather bad for business. Um, I know we're in the hells, but not everyone feels safe uh, going out at night when when there's troublemakers afoot. And I was wondering if you don't mind if you just go and and get some info for us, uh, report back, and I'd be able to. Uh, I'd feel better sleeping at night. So what are we picking up again? I just need information, and then I give you the wine and send you home. About what is the information? The cultists causing trouble. Yeah, in the neighborhood. we all know that. You got your information. You find out who they are. Is, is I that... do. I'm looking. I'm looking for a little <laughs> bit more, uh, more specifics. I they they were. I've got some robes here of uh, some of the troublemakers. I like uh, the death dog there. That's a very nice touch. Thank you. He's very. He's very intimidating. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we're um, gonna have to actually talk to people now. Ugh. I mean, the talking is optional. The killing. Accident. Also optional. But wait, wait, um, just to clarify, are we supposed to not like kill people? Don't uh, get caught. Oh, there's yeah. the trick. Show me Don't get caught. There. Wow. Everything I've told about the hells, I personally have never been here myself, but what family has told me is that it's sort of a skinny questions, don't don't at, let, wait for any answers. Yeah, but it's a dry heat. <laughs> the problem with these particular cultists is I believe they're loyal to another of the archdevils. And with one of them, with one archdevil ruling each one of the planes, I feel like I might be able to, to use this information that you find for me uh, in order to, to better serve uh, my, pa my, my patrons my uh, my loyal Lady Fierna, uh, keeping an eye on us as always. And I'll tell you what, you do this for me, I'll get more of this wine for you. We you wanted five, I've got two, but while you're gone, I could probably dig through the, the warehouse. Or we could just take two and get the hell out of here. I mean, absolutely, you're, you're free to do that as well. Wow. So where do you think we might find these cultists? Yeah, I would say we're already down here. We might as well make this worth the uh, trade in for the uh, Pipiap boots. <laughs> There's a, a warehouse farther down in uh, the packing district. It's usually empty, but uh, there have been some uh, comings and goings as of late. Uh, shame, Wait, shame. the packers are in hell? <laughs> they, uh, that's okay. where they belong. Let's do it. All right. Um, so, um, oh, 
Remember when I said this was a terrible idea? Things have gotten worse. Um, Welcome to hell. Yeah, I'm great. I feel like we kind of signed up for this to begin with. I'm just saying. That yeah. we did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what you guys are saying. I think this is a great idea. We win, win. <laughs> We're already down here. We get an extra couple <laughs> bottles of wine. Says the guy with the horns. <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> maybe learn something about the cultists and the politics down here too while we're at it. I just, I, I sure, why not? Let's I've do the got, thing. With the... I've even got some cultist robes, you know, uh, for followers <laughs> of Garion. To, to do you them. have a cart as well? No, just um, oh. I, I make it a habit never to wear cultist robes. There was this one time things got out of hand. Oh, I can imagine. Did you get set on fire? Because oh. that's pretty bad. I mean, wear a cultist robe. Always to wear cultist robes when offered. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got different experiences, man. <laughs> wow. okay. I'll wear a cultist robe. Different side of the tracks. It's okay. We can still be friends. <laughs> what color are the robes? Uh, they are in Black. the colors of followers of Garion. I didn't write a color in the I'll effect. go with black too. And um yeah. so, <laughs> very flattering. So, Fur lined black. Totally. Goes with my purple. <laughs> it's already hot down here. Do not put me in a fur lined coat. <laughs> You're the one that says, Oh, I always wear the compass robes. <laughs> Some way they're a little less garish than that. <laughs> <laughs> it is Gary on, I'm just saying. So, um, the robes you're giving us are for cultists of Garion? Correct. And the cultists we're going to investigate are cultists of Garion? That's what I need you to find out. Is that what you said, Gary? But what if they're not servants of Garion? Then we get to wear hot robes for nothing. <laughs> you would look very stylish. Wow. Great. I mean, okay. you can you can take them or leave them. I, you don't even you said you didn't even want one, so I understand. I mean, I I, I make a kind offer and you mm -hmm. refuse. It's no problem. And so I'll hold it against you. Over there and ask these guys who they are. I'm sorry. All we have to do is ask them who they are. I yes, think. our barbarian should just ask them who they sure, are. I'm good for that. <laughs> ask with your yeah, you might ask with your fists or with your face. So however you, however you get the information, however you care to collect it. All this subterfuge, all you guys skulking around in robes. Just, just go up there and talk to them. Okay. Oh no, I want to wear the robe. Oh, we do can that. do both. <laughs> I'll I wear the robe. Wearing the robe. So this one will put the robe on, but before that, he takes a silk rope out and he ties it around his waist, like this, and he hands one end. I, where will you hold on to this? <laughs> okay. So, and then he levitates up, and now you can just pull me behind you like a boulder. Excellent. <laughs> With the robe hanging down, now I look taller. <laughs> mm. Well, yeah. If, special coming up. <laughs> if we we can get a wheelbarrow and light you on fire, you'd be very tall. Um, well, I can right. light me on fire. Well, <laughs> if if you've decided, I have other patrons who will hopefully come in once your ilk leaves. So. Sure. Good luck with your unicorns. We'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Slam. And the door, the door was shut. <laughs> so, are we headed down to the Green Bay area to find these cultists? Oh, sure. Why not? How many did we check off that list? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Probably about half of them. That's we failed. Not one, not asking for more money or anything. I'm proud of all of you. We <laughs> yeah, we made. I made an unreasonable request. That's for sure. <laughs> I think uh, that we have to hit the rest of the checklist when we come back with information, for sure. Most definitely. In the pockets of one of the robes, you'll actually find Adara has slipped in um, vague directions to an empty building in the Packers District, um, leading you down a fairly quiet um, in, uh, section of the neighborhood. Uh, it's after business hours. The, the shippers of the Packers have all gone home for the day. Um, there, you, you get some strange looks as you're heading through the city. Uh, some of you in cultist ropes. Some of you are very tall. Some of you are just wandering around with a bunch of cultists without any sort of, you know. Some of us are towing cult, floating cultists behind Absolutely. Us. It's like the Macy's Day Parade here. Yeah. 
Um, just try, and I'll randomly change my like my height. <laughs> like bobbing up and down as we're going down the street. <laughs> I mean, I can only do that at will, so why not? <laughs> You're, you're, and since you're a little higher than everyone, like the bright light from the fires of the lava just sort of like radiates off of you. You just <laughs> reflect it. You're like this little glowing uh, uh, balloon. Nice. Hey, Amy, what is the most common race here in this layer of hell? Um, the non devil types? You're, you're, it's primarily going to be like bone devils and uh, bearded devils, <clears throat> and that sort of thing. There's some spine devils wandering around. I'm not sure if I can do that. Can I switch that with my changeling? Can I shift into anything like that? It doesn't say in... It just says uh, um, other creature. Yeah, go for it. So pick I will your, switch yeah, into... Favorite. I will switch into a, um, a different... Uh, let's say a bone devil in the cultist robes. You got it. You are now large. So I don't your ankles might be showing at the bottom of the robes. Pretty tall now. Okay. Luckily they're bony. <laughs> All right. So as you're wandering uh, through the city following the directions, you're actually going to see a uh, a group of bone devils in Maragon who are they're just they're running, they're running flat out towards you and uh, all the passerby that are sort of um on the streets they're they're getting they're booking out of the way but they're gonna run right up on you um and they're just they're just looking for a fight they're they're really they're just they're so pissed off and they're you look weird you're out of place some of you are wearing robes some of you are floating and they're just like i need to punch something and they just they're just gonna come up and start wailing on you whoa 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 friends uh, um maybe maybe uh this will cheer you up um you could have a better day if you don't attack us <laughs> i'd like to make a persuasion check uh absolutely uh 24 curses um one of them is gonna be like I mean, yeah, Fred, that might actually be a good idea. But the other oh. one is just like, Ugh! no, if we if we beat up these guys, we'll be able to regain our honor. We've we've just escaped. We're, we're if we beat them up, we're gonna we're gonna we'll have status in the city again. Um, it turns point, out, though, if you what lose, did you escape from? You'll be further insulted. So think about that. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we're we're on our way. We were on our way, uh, being transported to the pit of flame. We escaped some of the uh, the chain devils back there. We're on the run. We're trying to. You're in our way. We're gonna beat you up. Time to fight. I'll, I'm gonna pull out my axe and say, "Okay, let's go find a fight, guys. Who you want to beat up? Come on, us." No, no, we'll find somebody else. But what about those chain devils you're talking yeah, about? Let's go beat up those chain. Come on, let's get somebody who's worth fighting. You're not worth fighting. I'm a bone devil. Oh. Like you. And at that, they will take they will take personal offense. Well, well, there's there's so many of those chain devils. What if, they get, if we lose, they're gonna take us back, and we're gonna get I'm tortured. Scared of a flame. bunch of chain devils, you're not Heck worth you fighting. Go them? find some children to pick on. Oh, I hear there's somebody who's a devil dog back there. You can go pick on him. Go kick him around. <laughs> All right. Um. Give me a persuasion check and see if we're going to convince these bone devils to uh, stand their ground instead of running away. I mean, 19. <laughs> All right. Ooh, yeah. They're going to they're going to talk it over. They're going to have a rational <laughs> discourse with you. The the anger is going to to drain from their faces. Okay. Well, do you got do you have a plan? Yeah, we're looking for where are we, who are we looking for? Who are these guys were looking for? This they're, they're like thirty oh. seconds behind us. Yeah, well, let's let's wait. Let's crouch and wait and behind the well, building. We could go beat up those cultists we're looking for too, couldn't we? Uh, you can, but we're gonna run into the yeah. Sure, let's take out the bone devils. Okay, you guys, get up in front of us. We'll be right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, and they're gonna they're gonna turn around. <laughs> 
<laughs> I um, as they turn around, I'm gonna cast pass without trace on the group. Okay. And I'm gonna point the other way. <laughs> so now we've got a giant bone devil, a tiny, tiny Macy's Day balloon, three of you still in cultists, and uh, and and oh god, uh, flip. Running the other way, hiding from these uh, from the bone devils. All right, pass without trace. Give me a um, a self group self check. We'll As a bone devil, trace. do I have it's to 10. roll a disadvantage or anything? Uh, yeah, because you're massive. Let's see. Okay, so thirty feet. Everyone has a, a ten plus ten bonus to their stealth checks. 25? Yep. 15. 30. Okay. 26? Yep. 29. Yep. 14? CL, what did you have? Me? Uh, Chris. Chris. 30. Yes. Okay, so um, those like of you... Cover for everybody. Yeah, those of <laughs> Turns you... Turns out nobody here looks up. <laughs> <laughs> you just float <laughs> silently <laughs> above everyone. Uh... You're able to see from above and point out where people are coming so that you can take the, the paths avoiding everyone. Uh, yes, you successfully um, managed to uh, abandon the bone devils to their fate as they're going to get locked up uh, by the chain devils, taken back into custody, custody and tortured eternally in the pit of flame. Congratulations! Until they break out again. Yeah, probably. <laughs> people are going to look back at this stream and realize that this is where the stealth halfling was developed. <laughs> <laughs> Aerial assault force. Halflings just flying everywhere. That's actually, that, that sounds pretty good. I feel like that's a perfect AL cert. Halfling balloon. Yeah. Halfling balloon? I don't well, know. Well, you can, you can hear Thistle up there quietly humming Flight of the Valkyries. <laughs> <laughs> balloons. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, fire in the morning. <laughs> from their position, uh, uh, is able to spot the uh, warehouse that Shirvasa described and that Adara um, gave you directions to. Um, it seems to be fairly abandoned and decrepit. Um, it's looks to be one large building and then there are protrusions uh for smaller side rooms on each side three or four on each one uh, the foundation you can tell from the outside it's begun to to buckle and there's um lava bubbling at some of the corners of the the building uh on the foundation but otherwise there's a front entrance that looks to be relatively unguarded I'll send my uh, owl familiar, just do a quick roundabout to scope it out. Okay, sure. Um, if um, the, looking in any windows and then any doors, you wanna look inside? Just, okay. Yeah, looking from the outside in, not going inside. Yeah. Sure. Inside, of... you can see five um, humanoid figures and one salamander hanging out in the back of the room. There are also what look to be fissures in the floor where lava is coming up and bubbling. Um, but otherwise the humanoids are, uh, they, they look like they're having a meeting. There's a big table in the front, in the far end of the hall from the entrance and um, they're sitting on some crates and broken chairs and just sort of standing around and, and talking. Are we wearing the correct colored robes? These cultists actually aren't wearing any robes. See? <laughs> yeah, you're right, Flip. Uh, I'll, I'll fill in the party. Yeah, it doesn't look like uh, we're either in the wrong place or we're wearing the wrong robes because nobody's wearing robes here. They're also humanoid, these cultists? Uh, one of them is a salamander. Great. I guess I'm a bone devil for nothing. <laughs> they might be impressed. <laughs> we 
we showed up with the wrong disguises. <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> I would then like to turn into the salamander and just pretend like I've always been a salamander. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <clears throat> all right so how would you like to proceed i'm not an expert but that that building doesn't look stable it really doesn't uh, not even a little bit we really only need to collect information perhaps i could just spy on them with my familiar and listen in for a minute sure or how about this i've got another idea what if we turn um what is our uh were into a giant t-rex and he takes the entire building down <laughs> No, I'm not against that. <laughs> what 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 level? What floor are they on? Um, it's just one main floor. It's oh, one floor. High, okay. Yeah, it's got high ceilings, um, of twenty feet in the main area and uh ten in the smaller alcove rooms. We could just set the whole thing on fire and watch them flee, you know. But we're supposed to find something out from them aren't we like that, that's correct K killing them won't get us the information how about we just knock on the door oh, and see what yeah. we can do to join yeah oh that's... hey there you go you know? it's like reverse the reverse roles right yeah like knocking on the door <laughs> and you're there to join as opposed to them getting you to join i mean do you see the irony, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> right, can you tell me the words i'm just saying <laughs> Unfortunately, playing nice has a lot less teeth. That's true. I, I would be happy to chop into this building. We, we, we can always dial it up to T-Rex. That's true. There's if like... you pull me up to the window, I can just knock on him and see, and wave at him. Hi. See what We're happens. Your cult. Yeah. We, we so can we find out what the applications are. Right. <laughs> what we are the dudes? Fan boys and fan girls <laughs> and saying we want to join the cult. Absolutely. So no. is, is that the plan? Sure. Why not? Okay. Oh, sure. Why not? Like no ritual hazing. No. <laughs> All right. This um, is hell. There's definite, definite ritual hazing. <laughs> no. It's called torture here. Flat out. <laughs> Hopefully there's. Uh, All right. So uh, knocking on the front door. I would, uh, before we go, I will uh, cast uh, Enhance Ability again, uh, Eagle Splendor, because it seems like uh, it might be a good idea. Okay. Not sure what you mean, but all right. No, uh, yeah, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Uh, so as you knock on the door, after a few minutes, uh, you hear some shuffling as if there are. Um, barriers being removed from the doors and uh, <laughs> a uh, occultist opens the door hi there um hi. we're new recruits and uh we're here to to join you because it sounds wicked uh. deception check absolutely <laughs> uh 22 Okay. Um, <laughs> can I wait? Can I use a reroll? <laughs> Need more than twenty-two? I don't know. Absolutely. Why, Why not? Okay. Ah, oh. uh -huh, twenty-four. <laughs> oh my god! All right. Uh, one of the, the 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 cultist who opens the door gives you like a like a. Uh, I mean, cool. Let's come in, and I'll uh, start walking in. Uh, uh, Shintanaya, uh, we've we've got visitors, and with that, um, one of the figures sitting at the table in the front stands up, and you can see that she is a drow, uh, wearing um, assassin's garb, and around her neck, uh, where it hangs a shard of ice on a delicate chain. Um, Ice in hell. Ooh, yeah, that's good. Um, yes. Do I, do I, am I able to make a um, check of some kind to determine what that ice symbol might be? Um, absolutely. How about religion? Okay, I can uh, roll a religion. See what happens. Uh, 15. 
nothing immediately springs to mind with any significance of this shard of ice. Okay. Maybe we should have brought a pizza and a six pack. That's <laughs> good for keeping your beer cold. That's what that ice is for. <laughs> I mean, we're we're here to join the party, right? That's right. <laughs> I mean, you clearly weren't invited. Um, no, but... we heard you guys are the coolest cultists in town, dude. We're here to join. <laughs> Shins and I just sort of uh, tries to make eye contact with the the other cultists in in the room, and uh, they'll just they'll just sort of shrug. Um, well, what are, what are your qualifications? I mean, I'm adorable. Look at us. I mean, obviously. Yeah. I'm a salamander. <clears throat> we're, we're here in hell. Isn't that enough? Mm. You guys and look like you need dead. bodies. We got bodies. Mm. Um, you. Can roam the plains at will? Actually, why don't you sell us on you? Give us your spiel, right? Why no. should we find you? Oh, uh, I don't. I don't think I. I shall. You. You're quiet. Uh. Uh. Human. What are. You, what are you doing here? And she'll point at Mixon. We are here to find some wine. Um. But we are looking to stay a while and you know kind of join a club. And you came here. Yes, we, we, we ran one. into some guys down the way and they said, you know, we, we had a chat with them and they pointed us your direction. Hmm. Hmm. And, uh, and tell me, who are you loyal to? You. No. Well, we're playing it looser. It's possible, right? But... You know, we don't pay well. We're you loyal to whoever. Them. I'm loyal to whoever is a friend of mine, whoever will, you know, kind of stick up for us and, you know, build that camaraderie. Mm. We're in the moment. we're in the market, as it were. Question for you: well, Is yeah. is that a hell thing? Because nobody seems to pay well so far. <laughs> I mean, we're it's hell. It's not it's not great. We wouldn't we wouldn't be here if we liked it. We, we really just want to blend in with the rest of the crowd. Yeah, we need to. Build you some seem to be the cool kids here. Ah, uh, yes. Exactly. Well, about that. Um. <laughs> come in come in have a seat and they will escort you uh down and pull up some um some more of the crates and the broken chairs and the the salamander in the building already is going to lock eyes with you uh zephan and just like stare <laughs> like slow blink i'm gonna do my best to no blink <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna float down and sit on a crate. <laughs> um. Actually, when he's staring at me, one mm -hmm. of my eyes just changes to purple all of a sudden. <laughs> back. The salamander is going to uh, to walk up to um, Shintanaya and sort of rub against her, like as if you know it's it's looking for scratches and pets. Um, and she, as she reads up and she starts to fuss with, uh, her necklace a little bit. Um, so you are new in town and you're looking to join a club and you came here. Well, what qualifications do you have? I see you're big and strong and you can fly and we've got a, a salamander here. I already have one of those. I don't need one of those. Um, and uh, some sort of magical spellcaster types. Uh, One what? single tear rolls out of my purple eye. <laughs> Just sizzles on your face, I imagine. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a healer. Look, every night in my dreams, <laughs> I see you. I heal you as the sun goes down. You'll know. Oh, I would have let you keep going. <laughs> yeah, where are those donations? <laughs> Come on, people. <laughs> I know every Celine Dion song ever written. You guys better start donating. 
Okay, look, I've got an attitude problem and a huge inferiority complex. <laughs> good enough? That's actually, that's pretty good. Got I like a, got something to prove. <laughs> <laughs> breaking things, good, got it. All right. This is, I don't need another salamander. Okay, uh, so you're a healer. Yeah, that's right. Do you do you fight? Are you gonna we gonna have to like leave you behind and come pick you up later? I mean, like I fight people's emotions. I make them feel bad about themselves. Oh, so feeling. He's got a wild side. I've got a heart of <laughs> ice. I don't need to worry about feelings. Well, look. I feel like you might be a C student because your efforts are inconsistent at best. Mm. Mm. So, you sure about that? I don't, I, that's, that, that did get written on my report card a couple of times. Um, yeah. Mm. Resting my case. It fits <laughs> right in. That's not my answer. <laughs> mm. All right. So you with the swords and you with the axe and you with the stick and the book and the, I mean, okay. Well, here's the plan. We are here to investigate the pit of flame, to find out whether it's hot enough to finally melt Levistus from its icy from his icy prison on Stygia. So how do you feel about fire? It's hot. As a natural lizard, I feel pretty good about it. Hmm. That was my former profession, by the way, lighting things on fire, so. <gasps> Fantastic. Uh, show me what you can do. Uh, I pull out a candle and I light it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, <clears throat> we could do better than that. Sure. Um, it's at this point that the uh, the real salamander is going to look at um, Zephan and and just start growling, and uh, Shintanaya is is just like going to like she's listening to the salamander and why are you i i no i i th i think i'd like you to leave he's not hurting anybody so you're wondering if it's hot enough here to melt the other place yes probably i thought i had low ambitions <laughs> code red t-rex code word t-rex <laughs> 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 Go the, for it. The, uh, <laughs> the salamander is going to continue growling at uh, at Zephin's disguise and will actually uh, turn to Mixon as well and sort of like you can see like if a salamander had like bristles to uh, bristle on their back sort of like slowly stop and uh I would how are they set up in this room? Um there's two cult fanatics off to the left side of the room behind you. Uh there are the two cultists and the assassin who are sitting around a table uh made out of crates with you and the assassin and the salamander is next to her. Can I line them up in any way that lightning bolt would make sense? Um, there's probably, because you're all scattered around the table, you could get at most two of them. Okay. Can I, like, step towards, or, like, the salamander and kind of, like, grab one of my swords and kind of intimidate him to stop snarling at me? Absolutely. Uh, we'll take a, um intimidation check. A 20? A 20 will work. It'll sort of back down and cower, but will go and like stand behind Shintanaya and like glare at you from behind her legs. Like a, behind the chair. 
then I kind of put my sword back, you know, not drawing more attention. I I really I think I'm going to have to ask you all to leave. My uh my my Lizzie here doesn't trust you, and I don't know that I should uh trust you either, quite frankly. So um and we're that not is, hiring. That is the exact time for code word T Rex. <laughs> Well, they're just asking us to leave. We got what we wanted, right? Yeah, we got the info. Um, I start to move my fingers. Do, do you know, anyone grab my wrist? So uh, I don't suppose you have any pamphlets or anything that uh, tell about what a what a great uh, group or cult that you're uh, putting Absolutely together. not. If we advertise, that's how we get caught. So you don't have any contracts then? That's good. No. I, I don't this all is rooting like... you on. I really don't feel like you have anything to offer <clears throat> as far as a, a soul. You, you seem a little empty inside. Perhaps I have more powerful friends than you realize. Mm. Try me. It's been lovely. Ooh, I have a soul. Oh, well, it's a little charred around the edges, though. <laughs> um, all right, well, I feel like maybe it's time to peace out. Um, great talk. Um, yeah. Only the you don't want to shed any light three. on this situation? Uh, wait, what? We could shed a little light on this situation. Sure. Like in the. All right. Ones? Cool. I cast Sacred Flame on the lady in charge. Ah! <laughs> T Rex. <laughs> and with well, that, and with that, T Rex has happened for sure. <laughs> All right. With that, we're going to roll in. As she just screams in horror. All right. So anyone higher in initiative than a 21? 24. OK. 18. So, uh, I tied at a 21. I was not looking. Was that you, Anthony? Oh, yeah. OK. OK. So and Nixon. Okay, anyone between um, 15 and 20? 18. Okay, that was, that was you, Thistle, right? No, that no. was, uh, that was work. Oh, work, got it. It's, I don't have any directionality for, for any of you. Okay, Thistle, what'd you get? Nine. Nine. Okay. <laughs> He's too busy laughing because he thought it was a funny joke. Okay. Uh, Zephin, what did you get? Ten. Ten. Got it. And flip. Flip got twelve. Got it. A heroic twelve. Okay. Got a cultist rolling in here. And one salamander. Okay, so we've got two cult fanatics off to the side and the left. There are two cultists, a um, assassin and a salamander directly in front of you. But now the assassin seems to be uh, bathed in radiant light, if, uh, if that is correct. And I am super out of focus now. Yeah, right. if, if, if that, you're going to let that go off, then they need to Absolutely. make the, uh... Dexterity saving throw, DC 19. Ooh, that is a 17. All right, so hit me. <laughs> uh, so oddly, 17 points of radiant damage. Okay, takes it. Praise Bahamut. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, Benefitrix. Okay, um, I'm gonna try to find a you know 20 foot radius. Okay. Of enemies. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yes. If you two yes. cultists. That's a spirit. And a salamander. Okay, so they can give me an intelligence savings throw. Oh, Seventeen no. synaptic static coming at them. Okay, uh, the two cultists do not make it, but the salamander gets an 18. Okay, so uh, I rolled trash, so that's 21 psychic damage. 
Okay, the cultists all seem to take it. Okay, and uh, because they failed the save, mm -hmm. uh, they roll a d6 and subtract it from all of their attack rolls, ability checks, and Ooh, got to it. concentration. Does my salamander take half damage? Uh, yes, they okay. would take half damage, and uh, the cultists <laughs> can roll at the end of their turns to end the effect that they have on them. Got it. And that was a wisdom? That was intelligence. And got it. 17. Make notes for the rest of me, or for future me. And uh, I'll back up a little bit, being a glass cannon and such. <laughs> OK. Mixon, that brings us to you. All right, so I'm going to attack with my short swords. Yes. A 23. OK, who are you looking to hit? You're closest to the assassin? Yes. OK, 23 will hit. Say 12 points of damage. Yep, we'll take it. And then with my other short sword, mm -hmm. um, that would be an 11, but I'm going to use a reroll on that. Perfect. Uh, that is a 15. We'll hit. Ooh. And that's two points of damage. Okay. And then my second attack. Yep. Five plus an eight, 13. Uh, 13 to hit? Yes. Or, uh, we'll miss. Ooh. And then second short sword, mm -hmm. 25. We'll hit. Okay. Three points of damage. OK. Takes it. Okay, that brings us to the assassin who is going to multi-attack with its surrender. short sword. Surrender. I think surrender. Is what you're... No? Okay. Yeah. No, I don't, not, there's no there's no surrender in her uh, <laughs> in her yet. Um, we've got let's see a sixteen on Mixon should hit. And so we're going to take, uh, where's my dice? One, two, three, four, sneak attack, uh, six, nine, 13, 16, 18, uh, piercing damage. And I'd like you to, to make a con save for me, please, Mixon. <laughs> Twenty-five. That passes, but you're still gonna take some poison damage. So that's twelve, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, plus three more. D six, twenty-four, twenty-six, twenty-nine poison damage, please. Ow. Uh halved. My apologies. So fourteen. Because you passed. All right, and then um, Shintadaya is going to stand her ground and uh, bear her, her short sword. So as, as, as I get hit, um, I kind of like holler out to, to flip that I'm not looking so good. Yeah, I got you, buddy. Okay. Got a song with your name on it. <laughs> That uh, brings us to Wurr, who is not quite in T-Rex form. Not yet. Not yet. Ah, delightful. Maybe I'll squish you before then. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wurr, what would you like to do? I have my great axe. I'm going to not wait to become a T-Rex. I'm going to use it to chop uh, the lady in half if I can. Right okay, down. please do. Give it a shot. She was so employed. All right. I don't even know what the hell that is. Looks like a 20. 20 will hit. Got one of those D&D &D dice. Looks like that. <laughs> nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, so 20 and it's uh, D12 plus 3. Mm -hmm. There we go. That is a 2. Uh, do I roll twice or is it double? Um, roll twice, please. All right. So 2 on the first one and 4 on the second one and Plus the three is nine. 
Right. Okay. Right, Take double the bonus too. I always forget. Uh, no, double the bonus, just the okay. dice. Yep. Okay. Do you have? Um, are you raging? I should rage. Good point. Yeah, I'll rage. Yeah. Okay. This seems like a good final battle type of rage time. So uh, that gets me a radiant damage, I think, in my first hit too. Let me see. Okay. Da, 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 da. Trying to figure out how all this stuff works. Features and traits. Yeah, it gets me extra damage. What the hell it is though? D6 plus half of your barbarian level? There we go. I will do that. So one plus half my barbarian level is five, two. So three points of damage, radiant damage. You got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, behind you, you can hear that one of the cult fanatics begins casting a spell. Oh. oh. Um, Hunter's spell. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, the spell will not go off. The second cultist, um, see, seeing that uh, the the other cultists didn't get to fire off their spell, is going to run up to um, to flip and make two attacks with uh, with a dagger. I wasn't so, the one who counterspelled, man. Relax. <laughs> one is a net one. The other one is a. Wait, wait. I'm going to um. I'm going to cutting words his attack. Okay. Um, I'm going to point at him and say, you're so uncoordinated, you're social de distancing by accident. <laughs> I'm going to reduce his attack roll by four. Oh, that brings it to a 12. So that, uh, that will miss you. And he just like whiffs. Stat his dagger gets stuck in the ground. Okay, that brings us to Zephan. Zephan is going to cast Polymorph, and he's going to turn Wurr into a T-Rex. I would right. like to know, how does the lady look with the ice around her neck? Uh, other than pissed off, um, she's got a few um, uh, singes and cuts in her arms, but she looks like she's... She still looks pretty good? She's not looking too bad, yeah, considering... Okay. I am then going to twin the spell. Okay. And I'm going to turn her into a box turtle. This seems like maybe a bit of a mismatch, but I am all for them. Okay. I'm trying to look up those stats real quick. <laughs> Do you have a stat block for a turtle? I don't, but I can get that for you as soon as my turn is over. Okay. Oh, can I use the dragon turtle stats? Because that's <laughs> Cool. Um, only if we were her cultists could you use the dragon turtle stats. Mm. She blew that. I could have turned her into a dragon turtle, but mm. she, she made that bad choice. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Uh, well, she is now uh, suddenly much shorter and slower and um, is a turtle. Boxy. Hashtag poor life decision. And I will <laughs> say, I, you, she does have to roll. She does have to make a contested roll. Okay. What am I rolling? Wisdom saving throw. Got it. Uh, that is a 14. That's a failure. <sighs> well, it's turtle time. She's a turtle. Okay. Man, I love being a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any pizza? And All I right. linked the T-Rex stats for you uh, were. Yep, I saw them. I got them. Awesome. Yeah. I'm now much bigger and more badass here. <laughs> Okay, so Zephan, you stay in put. I am going to move over to her. Okay. And I probably don't have a free action to pick up the turtle, right? No. That's fair. Pretty heavy. How big, how heavy is the turtle? I don't know. It's your turtle. That's, that's pretty big. Yeah. I would not want to, yeah, I don't know that I could lift one of those unaided myself. I will plan on trying to do that next turn. Okay, sounds good. All right, Thistle. Mm, so many choices. <laughs> um, so, uh, are you really hurt? 
We're going. Um, you got it. Are you sure? Okay, yeah, cool. I think so. Yeah, yeah cool. right on. Cool. Um, let's make this random. Uh, so I will cast Far Step, uh, which will, as a bonus action, which will let me, like, you know, teleport 60 feet to an occupied space I can see okay. on each of my turns before the spell ends. And I'm going to teleport to a place where I am holding on to the back of the T-Rex. <laughs> uh, while I'm holding on to the back of the T-Rex, while the T-Rex with strangely the same size arms as he had as a person um, <laughs> uh, is killing things, I will uh, yet again uh, pull out a little, uh, this time I'll pull a little bell and I'll ring it and um, Does this the cultist leader will, will, we were talking to will uh, necrotic energy will explode out from underneath her as I oh. uh, as I cast uh, uh, Toll the Dead Okay, wisdom save? Uh, yes. On which one? I, on the leader. No, she's a turtle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Go ahead. You want to? I'll, I'll let oh, you. Oh, yes. I have wisdom of 10. Okay. I'm role playing here. That's <laughs> 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 you your call. On her save. I'm 100% okay. for it. <laughs> um, we got to kill her sometime. I was going to take her to the rock, Sasha. <laughs> well, now you can take her corpse. God, they, why did you have to tell me the cool idea afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Then you can go ahead and play. It's all, all right. 15 up. points of necrotic damage. How many? I'm sorry. 15. 15. Yeah. She's... And now I feel stupid. <laughs> She's you could very... totally take her to the rock, Sasha. That is a way better idea. She's disoriented, oh. but really angry. <laughs> and a turtle. <laughs> yeah, she's still a turtle. She has seven, <laughs> giant snapping turtle with 75 hit points. Okay. <laughs> really? <laughs> so right. if you mention the Rakshasa thing, I'll stop attacking her. <laughs> <laughs> I see the black uh, necrotic energy drift out. I'm like, no, the turtle. It's the, it's the whole point of the plan. And it's I rolled a on the wound. wild magic table. Okay. And a something has happened. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. A, a unicorn controlled by the DM appears in a space uh, within five feet of you. <laughs> hey, it's Phil. Can we Phil? take her back with the unicorn? <laughs> Should have turned her into a cat. <laughs> so we spike her on top of the unicorn and drive the unicorn up to the small ear. <laughs> We're all set. <laughs> oh, Shivas is not going to like that. Mm. Um, let, <laughs> let me pull up some uh, unicorn stats. But it turned control... out to be a way better idea than I thought it would be. <laughs> is it a? <laughs> Here's a question: Is it a uh, friendly unicorn, friendly to you, or because it's? Uh, controlled by me is it like super pissed off because now it's in hell and it's really scared because there's a t-rex and a turtle and a, are you still a salamander i am still a salamander <laughs> and i have there is no ruling on the unicorn in the wild magic chart so that's up that's to up you, to our, you our fanciful yeah. dm interesting okay so many choices Okay, uh, I'm gonna roll. Uh, actually, Thomas, roll that unicorn into initiative for me, please. And that will bring us to uh, Flip. Oh, okay. Um, so he takes out his mandolin and yes. he starts plucking it and he looks at Mixon and he says, look into my spells. They will heal all your cuts and scrapes. Feel your heart, it still beats. It's all because of me. And uh, he'll cast a third level cure wounds. Uh, six, uh, 12, and uh, that's a uh, uh, 15 back. And uh, I'm taking requests. So um, the next person <laughs> to donate in the chat uh, will get my next song choice. Uh, Jake just had an excellent suggestion that I turn this unicorn into a nightmare unicorn 
So if anyone oh. wants to see that happen, uh, maybe put like a like a twenty five dollar donation into into the uh, thing. Tag it. We'll see if we can get some uh, some nightmare going on here before their turn comes around. <sighs> The unicorn has a has an initiative roll of twenty. Perfect. <laughs> Fit in right there after mixing. Okay, so flip. Are you saying put after your beautiful heartfelt song? Um. Well, if I move, that guy's gonna stab me, and uh, I'm I'm too cute to bleed, so I'll stay put. I believe it. I believe it. All right, that brings us to the cultists who are pretty close. Um, one of them has never seen a T-Rex before in their their life. So they're going to- um, Neither has the T-Rex. <laughs> the, they're <laughs> each going to um, attack with their scimitars. Uh, the D6 comes off my attack roll for the synaptic static. Is that correct? Perfect. Okay. I've got, oh, I've got a 19 plus three is a 22 minus six. Uh, so that's going to be a 16 to hit. And then okay. I've got uh, a 15 plus three is an 18 minus a one, which is a 17 to hit. Both hit. Perfect. All right. So 2d6. Uh, three, four, five, six slashing damage. Um, I assume this is just on like your T Rex ankles because you're just massive. Yeah, exactly. Poking me in the an ankle biter. <laughs> <laughs> they're they, they're feeling pretty ineffective. Um, and then the salamander is going to uh sidle up to um to Zephin and um is 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 kind of kind of irritated that you're taking its form and so it's going to make two attacks uh one with its tail and it's going to stab you with a spear um so that's a 17 to hit with a tail and a 14 to hit with a spear which hits so 2d6 um, those both hits I... but i'd like to make one of them uh... I lost you there, Thomas. Sorry, um, I'm pushed to talk. I am going to use Bend Luck. Okay. And on the 14, I'm going to roll a D4 to make sure it doesn't hit. Okay. Also, I didn't get the damage from the guys who hit me. I'm not sure how much they did. Um, oh, does anyone remember? It was 2D6 plus, I think it was 3, 4, 5. It was 6 damage. 6 damage total? Yes. Okay. T-Rex can take that. Uh... Flip, did you have something you were going to add there? Uh, I was going to um, say that I could cutting words one of them, but maybe I don't have to. Um, my brain is full. Do you want to cutting words the spear? I'm no, I'm he's, okay. he's doing something. He's fine. I was, okay. He, he, yeah. Okay, perfect. So we're going to roll. Nightmare is online. Somebody made the donation. Oh, God. Nightmare Unicorn. Yeah. Big Bird and Nerd 21. Thanks a lot, pal. <laughs> Y'all are the best. No, it's 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 all good. Okay, Mostly. so I've got ten. Tortured for a good cause. I volunteered yeah. to sing a song to give us a freaking nightmare instead. <laughs> What's up with that? I've, you've got uh, fourteen piercing damage from the spear as the salamander stabs you, and then I've got two um, fire damage. One second. Oh, the devil dog's going away. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So that brings us back to the top of the round. So Venefitrix, you, uh, there's a T-Rex, there's two salamanders, a nightmare has appeared. Um, I'd like to see if, can I line up a lightning bolt that would hit a bunch of people? I can probably give you um, the two cult fanatics because one is pretty close, but um, outside of melee range for you, and then the other one that didn't make their way up. Um, but everyone else is kind of clustered and moving around, and I don't think you'd be able to get without um, hitting one of your allies. Okay, so I'll hit them with uh, Lightning Bolt, Dex okay. 17. 
Okay, I've got, oh, they're both going to fail. I've got a 15 and a 16. 30 lightning damage. That is the first that they're taking for both of them, but that immediately just chars them, and they are not looking great at all. Like a stiff, a stiff fiery breeze would probably knock them over. All right. That's for saying I had no soul. <laughs> all right, mix in. Sorry, I had to find the unmute button. Um, so I am going to, who am I next to? Am I, the turtle is still close to me? Yeah, the turtle's right in front of you. Um, I believe someone walked over. Uh, Zephan is trying to pick up the turtle, so pretty close. Um, but there are two cultists who are um, probably within um, like 15 feet. Okay, so... Um... If I move, will I provoke an opportunity attack? Um, I think the turtle would snap at you, but I don't think they're going to do... They're, they're not going to be able to reach. They don't have a whole lot of neck movement. So, okay, so yeah. I'll move to one of the cultists, and okay. I will attack with my short sword. Please do. 18? 18 will hit. It's nine points of damage. Oh, that is enough to take them down. How do you how do you take them down? Um, I just I go for the head and I rear back and I just slice across and just whop his head go off. Flying and land somewhere staring at you. That's delightful. I love the hells. All right, so that's one cultist down. And can I move to the other cultist? And Absolutely. Okay, Amy knows so all about taking off the head of a creature. She's done that within the last twenty four hours. <laughs> it was so great. Um, so I assume that's a 10 plus a 18. 18 will hit. Okay. That's three, three plus six, so nine, nine Ooh. points. Perfect. Yes. That will kill that cultist as well. So I do the same thing with him. Just kind mm. of this stone in the that's, room. That's pretty gross. All right. Two cultists down. All right. Staying put. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, um, Shintanaya is now a turtle. <laughs> um, what kind of turtle stats can I use? I link the turtle to stats for giant turtle, and I'm right there if she wants to attack. Perfect. There it is. Got it. Um, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna take some, some turtle stabby bitey damage. Uh, oh, well, that's a that's a nat one. DM discretion. I'm going to re-roll. Mark that one off, please, Jake. All right, that is a 22 to hit. That hits. All right, and that's 46 plus 4. Turtle damage, 5, 8, uh, 13, 15 plus 4, 19 slashing damage. She's a very, <laughs> very angry turtle. Wow, I went to hell and got killed by a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Everyone get the t-shirt. It's coming close. Okay, so that's the turtle, and now it's mystical <laughs> nightmare time. All right. I know this could really backfire with Zephin's menagerie. <laughs> yes, what? Definitely get a cutting word, somebody. Okay, I am going to, let's see. Um, bring this one up again. Um, the unicorn is going to charge towards the T-Rex. Of course um, it is. Of course it is, because it is the biggest, weirdest thing in the room. The turtle's pretty weird, but it's not very big. So we're going to use its hooves. And charge. Um, okay, so I have a question, and I'm gonna be I'm gonna be really sad for asking this. I'm yeah. not sure, but um, is polymorph a concentration spell? Does it depend on the polymorph? It is. Actually... Oh, saying... it, it can be twinned, right? It's it's a spell that doesn't it that doesn't. No, no, no. It can be. It's just that but you, you just got bit. bit. 
by the turtle. Oh, I did. So yes. Yeah, so did you I make could. your concentration check? I did not, but I will right now. Yes, please do. Because I'm gonna feel bad about stabbing. Now we use there. rerolls. Yes. <laughs> All the rerolls. I got a 19 on the die, so I think I'm okay. okay. Oh, we're good. All right. Yes. <laughs> I just don't want anybody out there to call us on Teton. Yeah. No, I, I looked up. I did the same thing. I was terrified that I was breaking the rules on twinning the concentration. And I looked it up and I'm like, I don't oh. want to go into this into a <laughs> chat room and have them be like, you can't do that. You can't do that. All right. So. No, no, we didn't reroll. We're good. One attack with its hooves, one attack with its horn on the T-Rex, plus seven to hit. So I have a 22 to hit were. Oh, and okay. that should do it. Are you cutting words? I uh no, I'm not gonna cutting words that one. Okay. And then my second attack is going to be a 19. Yes, I will cutting words that one. I okay. uh, point at the unicorn and say, watching your tactics in battle is like watching a pigeon play dragon chess. <laughs> and what? and the unicorn just sort of like <sighs> at you before <laughs> it continues to um Minus four. Uh, uh, stab the T Rex with its horn. That's a solid unicorn nut sound. I just want all to put right. that out there. Thank you. I don't practice or anything. Um, all right, so it's going to be three D8 <laughs> because it's uh, charging. So it's going to be piercing. Um, that is 12, 13, 14, plus four is 18, 18 bludgeoning damage. Um, and I'd like you, Mr. T-Rex friend, to make a strength saving throw, please. Okay. I hope the T-Rex goes prone. 19? Yeah. You are not knocked prone and my little unicorn heart is broken. <laughs> <laughs> oh. His then, arms were so small he couldn't get back up. You'd be stuck. I could re-roll that to get a one. Come on. <laughs> T-Rex falling over would have been awesome. Uh, it's like this fiery unicorn stands over it and snorts playing. <laughs> this soul right. who is riding the T-Rex does yes. not agree. <laughs> <laughs> not awesome. Mm. Uh, that brings us to the War Rex. Uh, All right. Turn. Retaliate. I finally actually get to attack as the T-Rex. Awesome. Rawr. So I get a bite and a tail. I think I'm gonna bite the the unicorn, obviously. The okay. Um, so I'll attack that. Let's see here. I got a twenty. That'll uh, hit. Plus ten, so it's thirty. Yeah. So, um, and that'll hit. And damage is four d twelve. Holy shit. Ooh. That's twelve. One. Two. And eight. So. Ooh. 13, 23 plus uh, seven points of damage, 30, 30 points of damage. 30 total, what kind? Just like punchy uh, damage? Piercing damage. Piercing, got it. And it says I can also do a tail attack. Is there anybody else I should be attacking at this point? Um, the two cultists that are immediately beside you are dead. The assassin is a turtle. Uh, there's a cult fanatic far off, um, but it's looking, both of them are pretty charred from some lightning. So mostly just unicorn. Okay, well, I can't really swing around and get the unicorn with my tail, so I guess I'll just have to chomp on her and just kind of... Okay. That was very tasty. Yeah. <laughs> Pick my teeth with her horn. Oh, that's going to be a sad unicorn. Okay, um, the cult fanatics are still standing. One of them is going to um, throw a dagger at Venefitrix because they saw where that, uh, that lightning came from, but that's um, only a 15. Yeah, that'll miss. The second one is going to try and stab. Actually, no, they're going to do this. They have spells. Um, going to cast counter spell. <laughs> mm, are you, are you, are you going to yeah. counter spell? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not today. Okay. <laughs> That one's done. So that brings us to uh, Zephan, our salamander friend, who's holding a turtle. He's not holding him yet, but he's going to damn well try. Okay. Pick up a turtle. Okay. Um, give me, uh, we'll make opposed athletics checks. What is the athletics on a giant snapping turtle? Okay. I got a 17. 
I've got one I'm going to use a reroll ticket. Okay. <laughs> and with that, I got a natural 19 minus one to 18. That'll do it. All right, so <laughs> now you've got this <laughs> giant turtle in your tiny little <laughs> salamander arms. <laughs> I'm going to face the face away from me. Okay. That's, that's probably a good idea. Maybe under my arm. <laughs> Maybe I'm holding it under the arms of the turtle on my back like a giant turtle shell. I'm not this sure. This turtle is so pissed off right now. Like it's just trying to like <laughs> gnaw at your at your head. And and I've got a movement speed of 30 feet. I'm gonna move 15 because I'd assume I'm encumbered. Yes, you are. It is very heavy. Okay, are you heading towards the door? <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> You got it. Uh, Thistle, <laughs> your your salamander friend is running away with the turtle. We got the turtle and we're out. Um, so, <laughs> mission accomplished. Um, uh, this is not wow. a sentence I expected to say when I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I see that the, 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 the T-Rex that I'm riding is being attacked by a nightmare unicorn. So I will raise my old rod in the air, and a pillar of light will descend upon the Nightmare Unicorn. Okay. And it can make a dexterity saving throw, DC 19. You got it. 17. Fails. Okay. And it will take 20 points of radiant damage. Oh, right. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bahamut. <laughs> Uh, the the nightmare corn tries to shake it off, but it, it's sort of like sin. Like if a fiery horse could look more singed, it's just sort of like dry around the edges and and kind of gross. Um, are you staying put on the T Rex thistle? Yeah, I am for the moment. Um, I could use a bonus action to teleport away, but I'm thinking uh, back here on this humongous creature is a really safe place unless he gets knocked over. You got a great view too. True story. Um, <laughs> all right, the rings to see you, Flip. Uh, okay. Um, so there's the nightmare unicorn. Uh -huh. And what else? There's um, the salamander is 15 feet away, heading towards the doors with a box turtle. The unicorn has just stabbed the uh, T Rex, but also been singed with radiant light um, from the. Uh, halfling, no, uh, yeah, the halfling on top who's riding the T Rex. Okay, that's uh, right. I'm gonna point at the unicorn mm -hmm. and I'm gonna say, um, Your mane isn't very well kept. Is your groomer a Grimlock? <laughs> that's so mean. Wisdom save. That's the a two. Are blind. Um, yeah, it's bad. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's an insult. Um, six damage and disadvantage on its next attack. You got it. And disadvantage. Got it. Okay, staying put, Flip. It's right, right there. Okay. okay. Brings us to two dead cultists and then uh, the salamander who had previously stabbed um, the other salamander, but now it's actually looking like uh, it's gonna wander past uh, that empty space and hit uh, Venefitrix. We're gonna try and uh, stab you with a spear and hit you with a tail. So the spear is a nat 20. Yep, that'll hit. The tail <laughs> is a nat one. So we're gonna we're gonna average out on that one. Um, Statistically speaking, right in the middle. Is, is the DM allowed to use rerolls? <laughs> I don't know. What does the uh, what does the chat say? I'll hold on to this one. So I've got fifteen sure. plus twenty twenty seven plus four piercing damage on the crit. Uh, someone in the chat told me it could, so we're gonna reroll that one. Uh, when you reroll that, you get a five. Oh, port magic! A broken heart. Um, okay, <laughs> but you're still gonna. Uh, Venefitrix is still gonna take uh, 25 piercing damage and ooh, a fire damage too. Let me get that one. All right, four fire damage. Yeah. Okay. okay, that brings us to Venefitrix. Top of the round. Uh, your salamander is piecing out with a box turtle. Okay, so. Um... 
<laughs> I'm wondering, <laughs> can I get a lightning bolt and get multiple targets, or should I drop a, a synaptic static again? Like, what, what what's the kind of orientation of things? Um, everyone. So the T Rex, the unicorn, um, Flip, and Mixin, I believe, are all sort of uh, crowded around together. Um, Zephan and the turtle are headed towards the door, and then there's one uh, cult fanatic up on you, Venefitrix, and one standing farther back. So you could probably do the lightning bolts again on them like you did previously. Okay, I'll do that again. So okay. it's dex 17. Ooh, I've got a 10 and a 14, so they're both going to fail. Okay, so the damage is 24. Oh, and they're just going to light up like a uh, a Mickey Mouse cartoon where they just turn black <laughs> and you can see their skeletons and sort of uh, yeah. and now and now they're dead. Yeah, black is uh, nice, like the shadow fell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fanatics dead, cultists dead. Yeah, um, I'll uh, I'll dust their dust off of myself. Oh, I'm sure you're just filthy at this point. Oh yeah, and I'll walk towards the door. Okay, um, Mixin. What are you feeling? You are muted, Nixon. My bad. That's okay. <laughs> um, I will uh, kind of start following Zephin and kind of being his protector. Okay. Um, as the, uh, actually... No, there. I, I think the only person, the only creature left uh, that's not on your side. Well, he's got the salamander who isn't close enough. So, do you want to ready an attack in case someone gets close enough? Like, uh, yeah, like I still have my swords and everything ready. Um, you know, I'm on guard to yeah, kind of send everybody off and kind of escort Zephan as we perfect turtle. Okay, that brings us uh, to turtle time. Gonna try to bite at Zephan again. That's a uh, fourteen on the die for a twenty modified. Uh, can I can I cutting words that? Absolutely. I uh, I point at the turtle and say, "You're so out of touch. Your sending spell uses BlackBerry Messenger." <laughs> uh, reduce the attack roll by three. I'm okay. also going to use my my luck, my bend to luck. Okay. Which I'm going to reduce the attack by by three as. Ah, uh, perfect. So yeah, the three had brought it to a 17, which still hit uh, three, brings it down, uh, or wait, four. Yeah, no, it's just going to bring it down to a 13. So you are safe now. OK, so that is a turtle. That brings us to the T-Rex. All right. Can I just intimidate the shit out of this thing? Can I like roar in the space? I Yes, I want like your best Jurassic Park T Rex at the end roar. <laughs> that was amazing. All right, I'm not even gonna make you roll that. Uh, the the nightmare unicorn is just stunned and just stands there like like actual horse agape or a horse mouth agape and is just terrified. Of no, you. Now go. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's gonna take a couple very hesitant steps away from you, but it, it will leave your range. Excellent. Okay, are you gonna stay there? Are you gonna move? Uh, I'm good with it leaving. <laughs> okay. All right, so the unicorn's leaving. Um that brings us to Zephin. If we get to five hundred dollars, flip we'll do a closing song. So that's sixty dollars <laughs> to go. <clears throat> Zephan is going to dash. Okay. Moving 30 feet with this heavy butt turtle. Okay. Um, so that's probably 45. You probably only have like 15 more feet to the door. Yeah. So yeah, I moved 15 the first round and mm -hmm. then I moved another 30 this round as well. Okay. So yeah, and so that's it's my like turn. Perfect. Uh Thistle. Um so the unicorn's getting ready to run. And everything else is dead except for like I guess there's a salamander there's who salamander. hasn't really engaged yet. Um, it was trying to uh, it was beating up on Zephin before it left. 
so it'll probably just pick off any stragglers. It's out of it can't attack you. You're not in melee range. Question for oh, you. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Um, I, I will go ahead. Sorry. I'll say I'll point at it, and a pillar of light will descend upon the, the solid. Okay. And it can make a dexterity saving throw DC 19. Uh, 16 is gonna fail. Okay, then it gets to take. Uh, 16 points of radiant damage. Oh, it takes it. It's not looking, it's, it's um, looking a little bloody. And I'm like holding on to the back of the T-Rex going, back up, buddy! <laughs> I got a T-Rex, so I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> Have I learned a good way to keep the turtle's face out of my face so it doesn't bite me? <laughs> um, if you have like a, uh, a, how should I just like use one hand to keep its hand like holding its beak closed? Give me a, a, a contested strength. I was thinking like like put it under my arm so its face is sticking out my back or something. Um, just move the face away from my face. So so closer to Mixon's face is what I'm hearing. That's fine with me. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, give me a dexterity check to see how deftly you maneuver this turtle. Hope you do it good. Not well. I okay. would like to use one of our one of our billion rerolls. Absolutely. <laughs> that is worse. That is a two. So okay. I am probably going to get bit in moving it around in my hands. How many rerolls do we have left, Jake? A lot, but I really don't want to use more than two. But the story is telling the point. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Um, I'll give you um, have take. Four points of bite damage on your fingers as you manage to maneuver the turtle so it's closer to Mixon because super fair. Sure. Okay, so that brings us to uh, flip just went. That brings us to oh, I'm sorry, this will just went. So that brings you to you flip. Okay, I will. Uh, what's left? Um, we've got a salamander. Who is who just got blasted by Thistle on the T Rex, and we've got the um, turtle who's being escorted off the premises. Okay. Uh, I'm going to point at the salamander, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to say, um, "I feel bad. Do you need a guidance? Um, wisdom save, please." Sick burn. Ah. That's a eleven. Uh, no, that'll fail for five damage. Okay, and disadvantage? Uh, yep. Got it. Anyway, not looking great for that salamander. A stiff wind is going to knock it over. Um, it is going to try and chase after um, uh, Mixon, though. So it's going to try and run up and hit with a tail. That's a two. So with a spear, that's a one. So just gonna, you're just too too quick for him, Nixon. You just get right outside that salamander's range. Uh, Benefitrix. Okay, since he seems to be uh, not well close to death, um, how's about magic missile? Yes, please do. Okay, so I'll uh, upcast it. Let's see here. And so, yeah, that is going to be, let's see here, roll a bunch of dice. Yes. Seventeen damage from a fourth level magic missile. Oh, where is my, I got to make sure I did this math right. That is enough. That is barely enough. <laughs> So that salamander is going to go down in just like a shower of sparks, uh, uh, leaving you free to. Uh... Yeah, so I'll call on Bell's blessing to mm -hmm. give me a bag of holding to and see if we can stuff that uh, turtle in it. Absolutely. We don't want to do that. It'll turn back into a person when it stops breathing. <laughs> uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep it in there so it doesn't bite anybody and then take it back out. <laughs> while we get back to where we're every going. minute uh, i think it's got 10 minutes of air in there yeah I, it <laughs> i'll allow it yeah uh, um, well, 
while that tenant nice. is going, I'll, I'll cast a ritual of Skyrite that Elminster is a menace to society. <laughs> <laughs> for, for crash landing, you know, the greatest human civilization into Mithranor. <laughs> I'm still bitter. Wonderful. Um, all right, so you have safely uh, escorted the turtle off the premises. The unicorn is terrified of this T-Rex. Um, it's just gonna hang out here until y'all leave, and then maybe go menace someone else elsewhere. It, it goes away after a minute. Okay, then the unicorn will hang out for about forty-five more seconds and see what kind of trouble. Maybe it'll like root around the crates, get some apples or something. It's a little hungry. Um, y'all manage to head back to Shirvasa, uh, turtle in tow, um, and he's. Uh, a little confused. Um, wants to know why you've brought him a turtle. I'm gonna it's say your turtle, you, isn't it? <laughs> you want? Are you still a T Rex? Did you want to not be a T Rex? Or... <laughs> I'll be a T Rex until they gotta tell me I can't. Awesome! You have an hour <laughs> as a T Rex in hell. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking, you know. Uh, anytime your halfling celestial warlock gets to ride a T-Rex into hell against the forces of evil <laughs> is a good day. <laughs> That's fair. With my next action, I will turn back into a, um, I'll turn in, on the way to the shop, I'll turn into a rock Sasha. Ooh, okay. Um, Shivasa is just going to give you a look. Um, yep. He's sort of like, can you can you tell me where you get your clothes tailored? You do look <laughs> mighty mighty fine for the finest place in Waterdeep. Oh well, that's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't travel much. I have lackeys that I send to do my dirty work. <laughs> I will let him know. I will put the I will put the turtle on the bar or the table. I said, this is a gift for you. This is the leader of the cult. Hmm. Some sort of ninja cult, I assume. <laughs> um, all right. Well, fair enough. <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, Shirvasa will dig around in the back and will hand you two bottles of wine for Pip Yap. Um, Not five. Well, here's the thing. I didn't have five, but... I do have, he digs out, there are small bottles of fire wine, um, which uh, you can use as a potion of fire breath. Uh, one for each of you. And uh, a small golden ticket that uh, it acts as a voucher for free travel by gondola the next time that you're in Phlegathos. <laughs> and you validate parking. <laughs> Absolutely. And he'll like <laughs> bite it and get it back to you. <laughs> Uh, but yes, you can if you're if you're ready to go. I'm ready to have you leave. Um, I've got a portal here in the back room. To get you off of my premises and this turtle somewhere else. Um, uh, Zephin. Last yeah. Zephin is going to cast light in the in the wider in the in front of the sommelier. Mm. No, thank you. <laughs> mm. Um, so yeah. we, uh, we ended up hitting $5,500 and, uh, we're almost done. So I feel like I opened yes. the I feel like as the credits roll, uh, <laughs> we need a bard to sing us out. All right. So I've got two songs and one is Backstreet Boys inspired as was requested. So <clears throat> what can I say except you're welcome for all the heels I've cast. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. You're welcome. You see, I'm not an ordinary human guy who's got two thumbs and stroms on his loot. When you're bleeding out, why is this guy? When the nights got cold, who warmed you with the songs? You're looking at him, yo, every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Feel that bad day. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, <laughs> Goblin <laughs> Flip ain't back. Oh my God, he's a human. Goblin Stephens, everybody sang. <laughs> Can I hire you as my personal bard? Um, I would be happy to play for you anytime for a good cause, Amy. 
<laughs> I would be honored to play with you all again because this was not what I signed up for tonight. It was even better. This was <laughs> this was so good. I am. Um, you all have been fantastic and um i don't know how much time we have but thank you to jake and mini terrain domain for hosting and for um fenway and aaron and the rest of the um the team here at fen uh, at, at jasper's game day um what was our total we are at fifty five hundred and sixty five dollars <throat> raised and we just launched this nice. morning so all of you, thank you so, so much for your donations and for tuning in and getting me a nightmare unicorn. <laughs> it's basically the best day of my life. Um, I really appreciate everyone hanging out in chat. And you guys, you players are wonderful. I have had a fantastic time. So thank Thanks, you so Jake. much for joining in. And um, if Jake's ready to take us off stage left. One, while we one two seconds. I just want to say thank you to our, our sponsor, Drive Through RPG and DMs Guild. They are doing a wonderful thing this week. I think it might be two weeks or just this week. They are doing, I it think. It starts tomorrow. It I starts think. tomorrow. Okay. So they are doing double kickbacks to the people. So if you purchase something, the author will get double the amount they normally get. Yeah. Um, so go spend a couple dollars, unless you're spending it all here in, in the donation. Spend, if you have a couple extra bucks. Um, there's some great stuff out there. Yeah, so May 4th through the 17th, uh, all of the proceeds will be going directly to authors for our purchases of adventures and supplements on um, the DMs Guild. Very cool. So, 